Give me, you need to wish me luck. Says well, what, what are you doing? N- or the, the what do you call it? The van test. At tw- it's not an NCT. Where are you what? getting it done? Over the road. <laughs> no, oh, no. no, up the road. Letter Kenny, Bally Shannon. I don't see it, but putting pressure on them there now. Aye, up the road, aye. Up a big hill. <laughs> oh, up there. Up there, Lurky Brack. And uh, fingers crossed, did you get any pre test work done? Aye. Kind of washed outside of it and give it a good wash underneath. Are it. you one of these boys that puts it through the test? No, I, I and did a wee bit. What's of, wrong? Did a wee bit of foot turn because right. I knew there'd be a lot of foot turn, so I did a bit. Listen, fingers crossed. Aye. What time's that at? Twelve o'clock. Why does it feel like you're sitting in a GP surgery when you're getting the, the, I know the NCT why. or the? Isn't it? You have test? to sit there and everybody's knocking <laughs> each other. You hope you go through. <laughs> do you know? And then you're delighted when somebody goes through. Then do you know what I mean? The boy shows takes you the white the white piece of paper and there's a couple of things here and then to be sorted out. Well, I have a car. Well, we, yeah, I can't. I won't say where it was. Right, I had yeah. a car. Uh, was NCT. It failed on one thing. Yeah. Right. Was never driven. Right. Retested. And then it failed on two other things. Oh. That was fixed. Never driven. Right. And then it was failed on three further things. How did you never drive it out of the, the, the NCT? It was thing. only driven that far. It was not driven. There was no miles put on it at all or anything. Right. But I, th- I, th- I thought that the rule is hit and miss. That, that they check only the things that they find. Mm, not, no, they not, for re- not for retests. All oh, right. Okay. That would be for. Uh, yeah. But can we hit and miss? Hit and miss. I but hope I hit, I hit. I hope I hit that ball home so, today, Daddy. Honestly, you're going to announce tomorrow whether it passed or not. Well, I'll tell you. Just because no, well, I don't want everybody to know. I wouldn't tell me if you don't want everyone to know. <laughs> oh, I suppose that's right. I <laughs> never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, very good. Right, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll, we'll get a, light, a candle. I'll give you an update at 12 o'clock. <laughs> oh, you're not on the show. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay By the uh, it is uh, nine o'clock time for a news update, and it's over to Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. Donegal woman Una Bowden and her two daughters will be laid to rest today. The 47-year-old, along with 14-year-old Kira and 10-year-old Saoirse, died in a road crash on the N17 in Mayo last Tuesday. The funeral procession will leave Una's father John's home this morning at 11 o'clock for funeral mass at 12 noon at St Junan's Church, Raffo. Four people have escaped serious injury following an arson attack on a house in Oma in the early hours of this morning. The blaze broke out at a property in the Winters Grove area shortly before 3.45am. Police believe the fire was started by flammable liquid being poured through the letterbox of the house. They're appealing to anyone with information to contact them. The Education Minister is being accused of being off the ball when it comes to keeping teachers in the country. Norma Foley is set to address the TUI conference in Killarney as it and other unions raise the ongoing issue of recruitment and retention of teachers. Social Democrats TD Gary Gannon says the issues aren't new but the Minister seems to lack focus to solve them. Look, I can't understand what the Minister has been doing for the last two years because the problems that were outlined this week by the teaching unions, they existed two years ago also, but it just seems to be getting worse and all the world. The Minister seems to be telling us that she can't see what everybody's complaining about. And that's the real issue here. And students in the classrooms are the ones who are suffering. The Mayor of Donegal Town has announced that he will contest the upcoming local elections. Barry Kennedy will run as an independent candidate. He has held the role of Mayor of Donegal Town since 2018 and says he hopes he can provide a much-needed voice for the people of Donegal. An information campaign is needed to dispel the myths around electric vehicles. The AA Ireland says online misinformation is causing people to turn away from more eco-friendly options. Its survey found 50% of people disagree that EVs are better for the environment than petrol or diesel models. The AA's Jennifer Kildoff says a state information campaign would help drive the green agenda. The government just needs to really put an education pack together for customers so that they get everything they need. Buying a car, whether it's an electric vehicle or an ICE vehicle, is an expensive purchase. They just need a full end-to-end customer review of what the problems are, myth-busting and just education. Weather now mostly cloudy this morning with rain in parts. Scattered showers developing this afternoon along with some sunny spells. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with news again at 10 o'clock. Until then, good morning. The National Lottery Good Causes Awards celebrate the amazing work done in communities all over Ireland. 
now inviting entries for the 2023 awards. So if you've received National Lottery funding in the last five years, tell us all about the wonderful work you do and don't be modest. There's €100,000 in prizes on the night and the food's not too shabby either. Closing date for entries is March 31st. You'll find out how to enter at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. Support responsibly. And now it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the nine to noon show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello, and a very good morning to you. Five minutes past nine, or four minutes past nine, depending which clock I look at on this Wednesday, the third of April, twenty twenty-four. How are you all keeping out there? I hope you're very well indeed. If you're off this week, hopefully you're enjoying. Uh, your break. It's great to have you on board. Uh, we've got so much coming up on the show today uh, to keep you informed and entertained. A bit of crack along the way as well. So hopefully you'll get involved. Uh, just sit there and listen. That's perfectly fine too. But we love you involved in the programme. Uh, you can WhatsApp and text us on 0866 to 25,000. 0866 to 25,000. Uh, if you want to send us a voice note, you can as well, of course, on WhatsApp. Feel free to do that. If you want to email, it's comments at highlandradio.com. Caroline is back after her short Easter break. She's answering uh, your calls with Shannon on 0749125000. Now, if you choose to watch the show, uh, 1.6 million live minutes viewed last uh, month. It's a remarkable figure, and we really do appreciate all the loyal watchers of the show as well. Uh, you can watch us on your big screen TV, your Fire Stick on YouTube, Highland Radio Ireland, and we're across Facebook, Highland Hub, Highland News and Sport, and on the X platform at Highland Radio. Uh, back to analogue. Uh, well, let's uh, have a look at the newspapers now, starting with the Finn Valley Voice, a young uh, St. Johnston mother of four who's battling leukaemia needs a match for a bone marrow transplant. Patricia McCrossan uh, Nay Rogers was diagnosed with acute uh, myeloid leukemia, leukemia in January. The 23-year-old a mother to four children uh, who are aged just between nine years and nine months. Um, sorry, the 33-year-old, I beg your pardon, uh, um, uh, mum's 33 years old, was transferred to Goa University Hospital for treatment and tests. She has now been referred to St. James Hospital in Dublin for a bone marrow transplant. On to the Nationals now in the Irish Times and uh, more disruption within uh, Fine Gael. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what kind of a Fine Gael current crop run in the next election. Not many left, it almost seems. Uh, several Fine Gael junior ministers are trying to or vying for promotion to Cabinet in advance of incoming Taoiseach Simon Harris's reshuffle next week. The new Fine Gael leader's job has been made slightly easier by Minister for Enterprise Simon Coveney's decision to step aside from Cabinet and out and about yesterday, with some of the texts coming into the show but speaking to people in real life and in inverted commas as well, the question was, what's going on in Fine Gael? There must be something going on. What's going on? That's what the people out there are talking about, or that's what I was hearing anyway. Uh, uh, while this means Mr Harris now has more leeway in his reshuffle with two senior cabinet roles to fill, Mr Coveney and his own uh, at the Department of Higher Education, there is intense competition among the junior ministerial ranks for elevation to the top table. Longford Westmeath TD Peter Burke, Dunlera TD Jennifer Carol McNeil and Dublin Rathdown TD Neil Richmond are all viewed within Fine Gael as among those in contention to take a cabinet job. The problem he has as well is there has to be a geographical and gender balance in his cabinet, or at least there should be. Meanwhile, the promotion of Galway West, Hildegard Nocton and Limerick, uh, uh, Limerick County D TD Patrick O'Donovan would fill geographical gaps in Connacht where there are currently uh, no senior ministers and, and uh, Munster, respectively, where Fine Gael will otherwise have no cabinet-level minister after Mr Coveney's uh, departure. But, of course, what also happens when these things happen is your journalists, your mainstream media journalists, uh, I suppose I'm amongst them, but certainly it's not an option I would ever take, uh, start to leave their jobs in journalism and head to government. Kira Phelan, uh, she is uh, the latest... Uh, journalist to leave journalism behind and go and work in PR in the government. Um, she is leaving the Irish Examiner uh, a year out from the general election, so a bit of a gamble. But she was their political correspondent, and I mean, if nothing against Kira, and I wish her all the best in her uh, future endeavours. But uh, if you look back at some of the articles, um, in relation to the government, really quite favourable, um, not really quite probing in terms of. 
um, in terms of uh, asking the tough questions, holding people to account. But then again, you try and hold politicians to account and they just simply won't talk to you. But anyway, I'd prefer to do that uh, than be uh, working in PR uh, for any political party uh, in the media. But if you look at the amount of journalists that have left journalism to go and work for the government in a, such a small country, it does make you think, doesn't it? And I think it's doing an awful lot, uh, at this particularly at the national level, I think it's do doing an awful lot to make you wonder what is actually uh, going on. Is working in journalism now just really a big, long job interview for a, a cushy uh, government job? Who's to say? Uh, right, on to the Irish Independent now and uh, sales of new... Uh, battery electric cars fell by 41% last month amid fresh calls for the government to intervene to make them more affordable. There is now serious concern about how the transition to electric has stalled over the first quarter of 2024, uh, traditionally the busiest buying period of the year. So were you in the market for a new car? Lots of people were. I know many people simply couldn't afford it, but lots of people were. Uh, and why did you did you look at EVs? What put you off? Why did you go, right, I'm going to go with a ICE engine or a... Um, or a, a hybrid or some other technology. Uh, there are other technologies as to how you can drive the car. Uh, why did you steer away from electric? What were the main reasons uh, if it was on your radar to get one in the first place? Only 2009 new uh, BEVs were registered last month, down from 3,412 on the equivalent period last year. That's a huge drop-off. Perhaps even more worrying for the motor industry and the government is that there has been a 14.3% decrease in sales in the first quarter to 7,971 in the corresponding period last year. 9,297 electric cars were registered. The gap in the space of a year so far would probably have been even wider had there not been such a scarcity of supply at the beginning of last year. The figures from the Society of the Irish Motor Industry also show a fall of 16% uh, in conventional car sales last month, though they were up on the 2023 figures by 8%. So that's a huge, almost half, 41%. I don't need to frame it any other way, do I? Of a fall off in electric car sales uh, in the first quarter of this year compared to the first quarter of last year. What is going on? Uh, of course, this ridiculous target that was first established of a million electric vehicles, uh, full electric, I presume they meant by 2030, uh, is not going to happen. Just to follow up on the JK uh, Rowling uh, story, uh, there's new hate speech laws that have come into place in Scotland and there are uh, those that thought they would stymie comments from the likes of J.K. Rowling. Uh, she is, um, I don't even know how to phrase her words without being um, accused myself of, of, of being like-minded. But anyway, she decided on April the 1st when these laws came in to test the laws uh, to see how far she could go in terms of uh, uh, people who describe themselves as transgendered women or just women uh, who were biologically born a male, uh, she referred to them as men or himself or, or them or he. Uh, and I, it was effectively testing the law. Uh, so J.K. Rowling says she hopes now all women will be treated equally by Scotland's new controversial hate crime laws after police decided not to take any action against her for those series of tweets. The Harry Potter author had dared Police Scotland to arrest her on Monday, though she's in the Caribbean, uh, for describing a string of prominent trans women as men. It comes as divisions uh, within the UK's Labour Party over the new legislation were laid bare. Ms Rowling, a prominent critic of gender identity, has been targeted by trans activists who vowed to pursue her under the new law. The Scottish National Party's Hate Crime Act introduced offences for threatening or abusive behaviour intended to stir up hatred, which, in Scotland, previously applied only to race and includes a possible seven-year jail sentence. But um, And we might see that here when the new hate laws come in. Uh, if they come in in the current form, the bar is really, really quite high, so you'd have to be simply misgendering someone is not enough. There has to be a threat uh, or, or further criminality involved in that. But anyway, she feels emboldened now and uh, continues... Um, with her approach. She's got 14 million followers uh, on X and um, obviously they are like-minded as well. Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of England, also came out and defended her. She He just stated that she was... Um, she was uh, stating a biological uh, fact. 
On to the Irish Daily Star now and the 70 charity workers who were killed by Israeli forces yesterday paid the ultimate price for their selfless act as they took food to starving Palestinians. Uh, three Britons, um, an Australian and a Canadian, American and a Palestinian driver w- died in the attack. The deaths led one charity group to declare Gaza the deadliest place on the planet for aid workers. In response, Israel says... Uh, they uh, deaths are regrettable, but actually refuse to apologise uh, for them. Tributes were paid to the victims alongside global condemnation of Israel over the deaths of the innocent charity staff who were working for non-profit outfit World Central Kitchen in a de-conflicted zone. Uh, they were in cars, clearly marked in large stickers, WCK. The White House condemned the airstrikes as outrageous, but it was probably American weapons that were used because the Americans have uh, recently shipped billions of euro worth of arms to the Israelis. Um, I, I don't. In, in this day and age, we all know. Do you know what I mean? It's not like... So those words ring hollow because it's your supplying the weapons. You know, we're not stupid anymore. Uh, the Irish Daily Mirror, just an update on um, people's attitude towards RT and the TV licence. I just thought an interesting headline. More than 15,300 people cancelled their TV licence direct debit last year following six months of scandal at RTE. Figures provided by Media Minister Catherine Martin show that in July, weeks after the station started hitting the headlines, 2,327 people stopped their monthly payments. The national broadcaster was plunged in controversy or into controversy in January 2023 when it was revealed former Late Late Show presenter Ryan Tuberty had been overpaid by €345 over the five years. So initially, anyway, 15,300 plus people uh, cancelled their direct debit. How many of them, under threat of sanction, uh, re-established that? I simply do not know. God, you just love your chocolate out there. Uh, an absolute fortune spent on Easter eggs. Uh, Irish shoppers spent an additional 9.3 million euro on Easter eggs this year, bringing the total spend to 24.6 million. Uh, customers also spent more on other treats, with uh, 1.1 million going on hot cross buns, a 28% rise in uh, 2023. Stats show grocery price inflation allowed for the 11th month, uh, sorry, slowed for the 11th month in a row last year. I think I'm actually going to have to give in and get reading glasses, you know, because when my eyes are tired, I simply just cannot read. Uh, it rose by 3.7% in the 12th week uh, to 12 weeks to March. 17th, down from 16% the same month last year. But anyway, 9.3 million uh, spent on Easter eggs uh, extra, bringing a total to 24.6 million and uh, 1.1 million going on hot cross buns. Now, I don't want... Is a hot cross bun associated with Easter? I'm not sure why that was singled out, but anyway, there you go. 086 20, is the WhatsApp and text number. Daily newspapers are courtesy of Kelly Centra and Diner Mountaintop Letter Kenny, winner of Best Family Dining at the Highland Radio Hospitality Awards. House Pride's £1 million warehouse stock clearance sale now on. Hundreds of sofas, dining and bedroom furniture in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Unbelievable price drops. Reclining suites from just £249. Sale now on. Visit our flagship store at Abercorn Square Strabane and House Pride Oma or online at housepridefurnishings.com. I'm making a move. Looking for real choice? Leave diesel behind and make the move to Toyota Hybrid Electric at Kelly's Toyota Letterkenny and Mount Charles. World-leading hybrid electric technology, lower emissions driving, with the widest choice of hybrid electric models from Ireland's best-selling car brand. With flexible payment options available, make the move today at Kelly's Toyota Letterkenny and Mount Charles. Toyota, built for a better world. When it's time for confirmation or first communion, it's time for a trip to Watson Menswear Letter Kenny. Choose from a great selection of top label, casual and formal wear. Suits with matching shirts and ties, blazers and jackets. Also denims, chinos and footwear from big names like Diesel, 1880 Club and Tommy Bow. Stand out on the big day at Watson Menswear. Open seven days a week on Main Street Letter Kenny and at watsonmenswear.com. Celebrate exceptional businesses in Donegal. Nominate your favourite for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards. 
in association with Michael Henney's Department Store. Our Customer Service Awards celebrate the businesses that go above and beyond to provide excellent customer service. To nominate your favourite business, simply visit highlandradio.com, fill out the nomination form and tell us why you love this business. The winners will receive recognition at our special award ceremony on June the 9th. Plus, they'll have the satisfaction of knowing that they made a positive impact on their customers. Nominate now. Nominations close 23rd of April. Now, uh, moving on on the programme, and uh, this is a a very difficult subject to discuss uh, publicly on many, many levels um, and and for for many different reasons. Uh, Of course, um, it's still very clear in our minds the awful uh, tragedy in Chrysler, the explosion which um, cost so many uh, lives um, on the site of a a service station and a a shop that was, uh, by all accounts, in the lead up to this, the heart of uh, Chrysler. Um, There are plans afoot to uh, rebuild on that site. There are going to be those out there that feel, you know, well, life moves on or uh, that perhaps this is the right thing to do. And there are going to be those that believe that this is a sacred site now where uh, so many people lost their lives and something else should be done. Maybe there's a compromise in there somewhere or other. Um, Donna Harper and Hugh Harper uh, lost uh, their daughter, uh, Leona, in the explosion. It's not that long ago at all at all, and uh, they both join me on the programme now. Uh, Donna, good morning, Hugh. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Greg. Um, Donna, I will start with you, if that's OK. What What do you know of, um, of, of plans uh, for this site? Um, Well, I don't know too much, um, Greg, (coughs) excuse me. All I know is that um, I had the owners of the premises land to my house last Monday evening. Um, They they told me that they're going to be building on the site. Um, As you can imagine, the shock emotionally as well, um, to even hear that so soon on with an ongoing investigation. Um, And... They actually, I had said to them, are you going to be building on the exact same site? And they said yes. Um, Emotions, obviously, were very emotionally upsetting to hear this. Now, don't get me wrong, Greg, I have no problem with the owners wanting to build um, their petrol station and their shop, whatever it may be, anywhere else in Chrysler. But I do not want them to build on, on the exact same site where we lost our daughter, where 10 lives were lost. Um, so many people were injured, um, so many people traumatised. One of the biggest disasters to ever happen in Donegal. To me, personally, it's a sacred, holy piece of ground where 10 people lost their lives. Um, we know exactly the spot where our daughter lost her life in that shop. And the thought of the shop being reconstructed and built on the same site, it's kind of horrifying for me to think that people would be walking over just where we lost our daughter. Um, and as you says, Greg, people out there will have their own opinion, um, and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But for me personally, as a mother, I don't want them building on the site where we lost our daughter. Uh, uh, and everything I say, Donna, and you know, is 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 with absolute respect. But it's just maybe to try and address some of the questions listeners might have. Like, unfortunately, we've seen often. Mm-hmm you know, awful tragedy on our roads uh, and, and often sometimes, you know, collisions where there's there's multiple fatalities. Uh, the site can be marked, but the road does get reopened and, and, and begins to go back into to general use for people. Uh, some people I've spoken to, incredibly sympathetic, but would put that argument to me that, you know, that unfortunately things do need to move on. We can, you can recognise what happened um, in an area, but you, you know it, it shouldn't preclude maybe the reconstruction of of the of the shop and filling station. Well, I totally understand that, Greg, and I do understand. As I says, everybody has their own views on this. But what would people excuse me? What would other people's views be on it if they lost their daughter? Well, you see, that's the question, and, and and that was put to me, and I have no answer mm-hmm. to that question. I genuinely have no answer yeah. to that, so I don't know. Uh, you ca- you know I don't. Yeah. Hugh, is there any yeah, is there anything that could be done here that would 
would would mark uh, the the awful events, but also allow for the construction of of, of something. So, like a memorial and a new shop could could co, co you know coexist on that site, Hugh. Um, Craig, it's, it's a difficult question. It's a difficult topic, but we stand fast on the point where I I can't fathom the, the thought of somebody walking into a new shop, walking over the the, the area that are we doing it, suffered a death that I wouldn't wish on anybody. Um, I I just can't get my my head around that. Um, now. Now you have raised the subject. Um, not that long ago, the the uh, Highland Radio had uh, on their news uh, a piece about the Red Cross still having 140,000 euro left on their account. Now, to be quite honest, I was gobsmacked about that because we were led to believe that that account was closed and that it was wasn't in existence anymore. Uh, so our my proposal would be, Greg, that there's money there. Take that money, buy a new piece of ground, rebuild, and let us mourn our loved ones where where they where they died. As you pointed out, Craig, that a marker could be made along the side of a road. Um, we could have a piece of ground where we could go and lay some flowers, sit on a bench, and, and everybody is happy. They've still got their shop, they've still got their petrol station, and, and the families. The people affected, the community, have somewhere to go to to reflect. What has been... The, the, there was a petition... Uh, 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 Gemma set up a, a petition um, calling for the reconstruction of uh, the shop on this site to be halted. Uh, Donna, what's been the reaction yeah. to that? Or, Hugh, you take that one, Hugh. What's been the reaction to this... Sorry, uh, sorry I didn't mean to cut across. Um, no, 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 go yeah, ahead. I didn't mean to cut across, oh, sorry. It's both um, Gemma, Gemma took it upon herself, and we really appreciate wh what she has done. Um, I suppose first and foremost in everybody's minds is um, there's been a, a, a few things going on, i.e. with the Red Cross. There was a meeting in Chrysler quite recent, uh, and there's, there's, there's things happening that we have absolutely no idea of. Uh, we seem to be people that are outside of the village that are, one for a better word, forgotten. Uh, it's very frustrating. It's very upsetting. Uh, and I suppose now is the time to talk about things. Uh, put proposals across. Let feelings be known instead of just uh, digging heels and, and, and uh, continuing on without any thought of anybody else. Hugh, were you told that a, a planning process was underway? Um, I think there was a commitment that... Uh, you know, families would be kept informed. I mean, obviously, the planning application would have had to have gone through the local authority. Have, were, have you, absolutely, were you have absolutely notified? No, no idea. You weren't notified. Okay. Uh, well, previously, the call called to the door, and no, we weren't notified. That maybe would have been an option to, to write a letter to, to say, listen, this is our thoughts, instead of just land at the door, especially. And I'm not saying, I, I honestly don't know who, who the two people were, but there's two people arrested very shortly beforehand. And emotions are right running quite high in our in our, in our family at the moment. Um, no, I'm not by any means saying that was anybody uh, in the Lafferty family, or, or I have no idea who the people are. But uh, regarding notification of planning or what's going on, no, I have no idea. Nothing, nothing, nothing's been related to us I at all. Wanna, I just want to be clear, Hugh. I understand. Just in 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 your comments there, just to be cl very very clear, uh, I have to be very very clear that. Um, this, th th those are two very, very separate issues in terms of the ongoing police investigation and what we're talking about now. And there's no suggestion of of, of uh, um, anyone's identity or anything at that point, just to be absolutely clear in relation to that. Um, uh, that's, exact, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, we have yeah. no idea who these people are. Exactly, I'm that's not, right. I'm yeah, not but making, but all I'm saying is that after that point, uh, our emotions were, were quite high. So that's uh, the point to, you're to making. Call, like, and I work. understand that. Just yeah. bit, so we're absolutely clear. I understand you understand, Hugh. Donna, is is timing an issue here? Because you know yourself, Donna, that everyone's uh, lots of people deal with grief in a different way, and and it's it's quite possible that a memorial could be established here. And for some families, it's just something they wouldn't want to be involved in. It would be too difficult for them to return 
uh, to that spot. Isn't that what kind of makes this su such a difficult subject? Because there are, you know, 10 families and, and then, you know, there's the wider Chrysler uh, community. Um, it's hard to really get a sense of what everybody might want. Oh, absolutely, Greg. Like everybody, um, everybody will have again their own their own thoughts on it as well. Um, there has been quite a few member um, of the other families that have reached out when they seen the petition, um, and they did say that they agreed with it as well, and they would like that to be turned into a memorial okay. as well. Um, the petition was set up, um, as Stuart says, uh, by Gemma Heaney. She'd be a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and the petition has it's been just going from strength to strength. There's the, the last that I looked at it, there was 720 odd signatures on it, um, all very positive and complete strangers. Um, it's been signed from people in Manchester and everything um, by people just saying that it should be left a memorial site as well. Um, but again, Greg, it, it was like um, timing as well. Um, when I had the, the call to my door, um, that was just on just on the heels of an arrest. Um, there was two people arrested. They were released without charge. Um, so as you can imagine, as a family, um, the motions were there, very upsetting. Even to think that there was arrest made um, and then just to have a few days later to have somebody call at your door to say that they're going to build. Mm -hmm. Okay. on the site where you just lost your daughter, so emotions were very high. Stay with me, please, if you don't mind, both of you. Anne-Marie's sister of Catherine O'Donnell and aunt of, of, of James. Uh, Anne-Marie, when did you... Uh, good morning to you, and I hope things are going OK as best as possible for you, Anne-Marie. When did you learn of these plans yourself? It was the same. Um, through um, people coming to the doors and then um, speaking with Donna and uh, if you. Um, and I'm of the same opinion as Donna that come at a bad time where, where arrests were made and for pe people to come in and say they're just going to build. You would be fully opposed, would you, to uh, uh, any commercial premises being rebuilt uh, at the scene of this tragedy, Anne-Marie? Greg, we met with, um, as you know, ORP is a, a company that was brought in with uh, Paul Kelly and the County Council to um, have regeneration of the area. And we were brought um, privately as families to see the plans first. It was very emotional um, and upsetting, but we did say that... The, the, we heard there was going to be a community centre and we said that at least something good can come of it from such a tragedy. What would it mean to, um, what would it mean to you, Amory, if this site was rebuilt on? But we, did, we, we said all along, we said to Paul Kelly, we said to Mr Ward and the council, we don't want that site to become another concrete building, shop or anything, it should become a memorial garden with a plaque of the ten names of the people lost that day. Okay. It's just on the outskirts of the village. So if it became a memorial garden, it would be bringing a bit of life to an area where there was so much devastation. Okay, I'm right. Listen, thank you very much uh, for your time. Back the village and the community and all their plans for going forward, but not, not to build a site back, back on that area. Definitely not. OK, Anne-Marie, listen, thank you for your time. I'm marie sister of... Catherine O'Donnell and uh, aunt of uh, James as well there. Um, ov obviously, everyone, um, it, it's still... And maybe that's, that's part of the issue, Donna, as well. This is just so fresh. Um, for everyone and to be talking about moving on at this time especially as we, we the investigation is ongoing we don't really know who if anyone is responsible at this point uh, that's even not including the absolute devastation of the loss uh, Donna <coughs> Absolutely Greg it's um, as you if, obviously as people have just heard Anne-Marie is 
as devastated as well at the thought of this um, and the thoughts the thoughts of putting a concrete building where there was one of the biggest um, disasters as opposed to hit Donegal and just to have that rebuilt um, very early on after I had lost Leona somebody had asked me to describe to describe what I had seen that day in Crystal, obviously because we were there for 24 hours waiting on, on Leona um, and she, you know the only way I could describe it to somebody Greg was a smaller version of the 9-11 um, as in the devastation I know the, the, the things were different but that was in the devastation that, that we had witnessed first hand um, again I have no problem with the owners wanting to, to build a shop or their petrol station um, I'm, but I'm sure Creasley needs it but just not on the not on the same site that's all the families are asking for I do have to just kind of say something on regards to what Anne-Marie had just stated that she was saying that the families I think now if I've got it right that the families were brought in privately and spoke to Liam Ward and Paul well there was nobody ever came to me or Hugh to ask us to go privately to talk to anybody so that's a bit of a shock to hear that again okay. um, Hugh, the, in regards to just what Anne-Marie had said yeah. Hugh you talk about being able to uh, identify this specific area that uh, Leona lost her life and, and I'm just thinking although uh, Leona was removed from there and, and, and buried somewhere else does this feel like we would we would be having the same conversation if someone decided to build on a on a graveyard if that makes sense is that to some extent part of her resting place you I, 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 I kind of I kind of know you're going with that Greg but uh, again I'm going to revert back to the comments made about um, and this is a, a sensitive issue too and this affects all the families as well and not just the case of families but um, anybody that's been involved in any kind of action on the side of the road unfortunately somebody's lost their life generally what we have found is that uh, going back to Chrysler gives you a different perspective. You get a different feeling from it. Yes, we can go and stand beside our daughter in, in a graveyard and mm. we can look at the senior around us and just be quiet or, or, we, or we can talk to her if we want to. But to revisit the scene, to revisit the area, it's a, it's a completely different thing and... I don't mean to be distasteful when I say this, but it's only when you're in our position that you understand what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think most people listening will get that. Donna, what is... How, how does this get resolved uh, then? Like, how do we how do we have a situation where, you know, your views, Hugh's views... Anne Marie's views and other views are listened to and heard, but then maybe there's also the views of the wider Chrysler population. Or do you believe that such is the devastation on this site that there really is no debate that no one could really consider building on top of the scene where ten people tragically lost their lives? What? Because you don't want to be sort of solution focused. How do we move? I wonder how we move this forward. Greg, if I, if I can well, just jump on there. the two of you, um, of course. So, sorry, Donna, just, just give me one second. I'll pay for this later on. <laughs> um, again, uh, the Red Cross have highlighted that they have 140,000. Uh, I had contacted uh, a minister. Uh, I won't give any names just at the moment yet. Uh, and I've been assured, uh, at my shock, that any money been left remaining, that... Uh, this money has been left in a trust for the families. Uh, I have no idea who who's regulating this, who's in charge of it, because, uh, again, this is all fresh news to me. But I would propose that there's money, there's new ground. Uh, the, the Red Cross are there as a, a humanitarian charity. Uh, no, no better cause than to relocate. We're not asking that Christa are denied a shop, that Christa are denied a petrol station, or they're denied an area where they can go and talk and meet. We are just asking for it to be somewhere different. Mm, but therein lies the problem, you uh, and, see. And, that, uh, uh, my understanding is, is that efforts were made to find an alternative location 
you know, within the town boundaries so that it would be the sort of heart of the heart of the community facility that it once was and, and th there's nothing well, you, 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 We're coming back to a very specific point here, Greg. Uh, and again, I don't mean to be nasty when I say this, but you seem to know more than us. No, um, yeah, uh, um, listen, well, it's just it's just t texts that are coming in, Hugh and stuff. I've no insight, if I'm honest with you. It's just... Uh, right, yeah, well, no, well, I, I, again, again, why why, uh, why is that not afforded to, to the to, Yeah, to well, the that's family, a fair you know, point. To be just given an opportunity to, to, to put their, their point across. Yeah, no, I, I think, don't I think, think that we're point. being unreasonable. Mm. I don't think we're being unreasonable. Um there's monies there gathered uh, and there's been held by the Red Cross that extended family members have had no benefit from. When I say extended family members, brothers, sisters, cousins, nieces, aunts, nephews, friends, wouldn't this be a, a, a great legacy from the Red Cross if you want to go as far as saying from the Lafferty's mm. to, to leave us something where we can literally sit at the point where we lost our loved ones, okay. where we don't have to... We don't have to bear the thought of somebody walking over to get a newspaper. Uh, you know, this this may sound very... It, 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 it may sound that uh, it's not that important, but to us it is. Okay, and Donna, again, there's money sitting on the trust. Yeah, I get you. Know, Donna, is, anything, good use. is there anything you want to add? I suppose that's again <clears throat> on just what you had, had said it would be fantastic if if that was the case. Um, and again, um, we're, we're not saying we don't want the owners to, to build. By all means, Creaslow will need a shop and they will need their petrol station. That's fine. Um, and if there was anywhere possible in Creaslow that they could rebuild us um, anywhere in Creaslow mm -hmm. besides where we lost our daughter and 10 people lost their lives... Um, it's just, you know, great when, you, when you're Donna, is there any, when you're first hand affected. I know, yeah. I know, I know, and that's what's going to make this next question even more difficult. But I, I'm just trying to tease it all out. Like, mm -hmm. is there, like, in in terms of remembering and never forgetting, but moving forward, you know, if there were, if there were, you know, uh, uh, kids going in there to get their ice creams and coming across from the facility across the road to that site and sort of the you know a buzz return into the community in, in that in a way would that not honor the victims rather than something somber if you, if you know what i mean i'm just saying maybe some people might have that view out there as well um donna or is that just unimaginable to you to even consider well do you know greg for for me being leona's mother mm. um carrying leona for nine months rearing her to the a strong independent wee woman that she was turning out to be yeah no, that okay. wasn't. That yeah, wasn't. Not, not where she took her last breath. And and I suppose not to go too much into it. But when when we identified our wee girl, and as you can imagine, what we had seen from a building, yeah. a complete building that went down on top of her, and that's what took so long to get Luna. Um, I could never imagine that. That's yeah, where she I, took her last breath. And, and I think too that's yeah, something that we should be. Like I, I, I don't know what the right answer is. Uh, well, I have my own personal opinions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter for the purpose of this conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes mm -hmm. when you're not directly affected by it, you see it as you don't see everything that went on that 24 hours. The 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 digging through mm -hmm. the rubble, you know, the discovery of people. <sighs> concrete dust everywhere was, blood was, stuff. I, I don't want to be hot i don't want to yeah. be cruel but i think there's a lot of people no, directly affected but they don't have that imagery mm -hmm. hugh i mean I, I remember talking to you uh when you were going back to work or, or traveling around i can't remember the sight of a pile of a rubble triggered you one time do you know what i mean it, it's it's beyond yeah. it, it goes yeah. far deeper than 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 a loss which a lot of people experience you know the scenes the visions what was on that site you just see a pile of rubble and that can trigger you into uh into a state really effectively um yeah uh, I'll, I'll not deny it, greg um there's certain things now that i i try and avoid uh and unfortunately one of them one of them is a, a building site or, or any kind of construction site where it involves steel work and, and rocks and but I, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to, to make a, a big thing out of this, but uh, the, these are things that I just can't.
can't face at the moment. Um, I'm not ready for them. Um, yeah, I get you. I just wanted to sort of... What I was trying to get the, the the point across there is is that when you've been directly involved, the, the, mm. there's much more to the the tragedy than than the tragedy itself, if that makes sense. Donna, uh, Hugh, there's, there's well, yeah, both of you, thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. Uh, and I hope there's a, a resolution is found. Thank you both. Uh, take care of yourselves. Thanks to Amory as well. Um, as I say, it's... I'm not from Chrysler. It, I find it a little bit difficult to talk about it because I'm sure there are people out there with different views and maybe they might find that they can't air those views because they could be seen as being insensitive or what have you and it's hard to articulate why they may might disagree with the, the Harpers and with Anne-Marie there. Uh, it's just such a personal thing. But that being said, um, it, sometimes we have to discuss the, the difficult stuff as well. Um, if you want to have a, a word on that, please get in touch with us. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Eclipse Cinemas in Lifford, Straban and Bundoran was honoured with the title of Best Family Entertainment Venue at the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards. Here are some of the reasons why. The Director's Lounge is brilliant. Homemade popcorn in a class of its own. The pizzas are amazing. The staff are friendly and helpful. I enjoyed having my hot food delivered to my seat. It's it's just a really class cinema. Treat yourself to a night out at Eclipse Cinemas in Lifford, Straban and Bondurin. Foy & Company Bally Buffet in Letterkenny are the largest stockists of interior and exterior paint in the Northwest. If you're planning a painting project and need help picking the right colour and brand of paint for your home or commercial premises, call in and ask our qualified paint colour consultants, interior designers and interior stylists. The team at Foy & Company Bally Buffet in Letterkenny will be delighted to help. The moment you win the semis becomes the journey on the way to the final. Hands clutching hurls and a bus full of messes, making bonds that will last a lifetime. Practicing for your Irish oral on the way. What did you do this weekend? Last weekend? Every weekend? And the whole team laughing because the answer is always the same. Camogie. It's the minor moments that last a lifetime. The Electric Ireland Camogie Minor Championships. This is major. Attention all sports fans. O'Neill Sportswear have an amazing clearance sale happening in their Straban warehouse. For four days only from Thursday through till Sunday, you'll find everything you need to look and feel the best on the field. From jerseys to shorts, tees to hoodies, they've got it all. We'll see you there. O'Neill's. Live for it. Are you struggling with ill-fitting dentures? Are you tired of avoiding the steak menu and going straight to the softer options? Blue Poppy's special implant-assisted dentures can help restore your full bite sensation. Call today for a free consultation with Drs. Ehor and Ahmed, Blue Poppy's new implant team, and explore our attractive payment plans. Find contact details for our Letterkenny and Donegal Town practices at bluepoppydental.com. In the next 15 seconds, you're going to find out where is the best place in the Northwest to buy a bed or mattress. It's Restex Beds and Furniture Mountaintop, Letterkenny, where comfort meets style. If you're with FBD Insurance and your van gets robbed, it's not a flippin' bloomin' disaster. That's not what FBD stands for. FBD stands for support. We support van owners like you by covering your work tools up to the value of 500 euro if they're stolen with your van. FBD Insurance. Support. It's what we do. Visit your local branch to talk to your FBD Insurance team. Requires valid van theft claim. Excludes electronics and software. T's and C's and normal underwriting criteria apply. Underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. FBD Insurance Group Limited. Trading as FBD Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Highland Radio weather updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local, shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. OK, so um, the weather forecast, mostly cloudy this morning with rain, uh, but the rain more of an issue the further east you go. Scattered showers developing in the afternoon, along with some uh, sunny spells, highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees with light to moderate northwest breezes. Uh, 
Minister for Enterprise, Neil Richmond, joins us on the programme. Good morning to you, uh, Neil. How are you getting on? Good morning, Greg. All great down here. Uh, right, OK. So some measures have uh, been or are being introduced uh, to support businesses. Talk to me about them. So in the last budget, we allocated €257 million Euro to a scheme known as the Increased Cost of Business Grant. Now, that went live for applications two weeks ago. It requires businesses simply just to log on to the Donegal County Council website, confirm their bank account, confirm that their business is still trading, and they'll receive a grant up to a, fi- a grant of up to €5,000 in the next number of weeks to recognise that costs have gone up for businesses in so many different areas. It's a really simple process. It's not a loan. There's no repayment. It doesn't have pages of application forms or admin, but if you pay commercial rates of up to €30,000 last year, you're eligible for this grant. Unfortunately, Greg, only 5% of businesses in Donegal have registered so far, so we're really putting uh, a push on to encourage businesses. They have another four weeks to register, and the sooner they they register, um, the sooner they'll get paid. Okay, so just run through then briefly, uh, because sometimes maybe businesses feel this is uh, too complicated, but you've been clear to point out it's not. So uh, I know you have just run through it, but to be uh, extra clear, talk to me about the, the, the size of the businesses, the types of businesses, do they have to be up to date in their rates if, if they've got, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, if they owe money to revenue, stuff like that? You know what I mean? What are the what are the criteria that might exclude someone from this? All that they need to have done is paid commercial rates in the year 2023. Mm. If they paid rates below thirty thousand euro, they're yeah, eligible. Right. If you paid rents. If, if you paid commercial rates below €10,000, you'll get between €2,000 to €5,000 in a one-off grant. If you've paid rates between €10,000 and €30,000, you'll get a grant uh, of €5,000. That's it. They just need to get onto the website, confirm um, that their their business is uh, confirm that their business is still trading and confirm that their bank account details are correct. And as I said, anyone under €10,000 will get 50% uh, of the commercial rates they paid back. Anyone over €10,000 will get about €5,000. It's a one-off grant. There's no repayment. There's about three boxes to tick on a website just to confirm your company's trading, that your bank account uh, is, is valid. Um, there's no other catches. There's no other criteria. Um, once you paid your commercial rates in 2023, you are eligible. Why do you think there's been such a low uptake then? Well, I suppose the scheme has only been open for two weeks mm. um, in, in terms of registration. It's a busy two weeks between St. Patrick's Day and Easter, and we understand that. But also, speaking to businesses and the representative groups across the country, there were a number of people who were a bit worried that this would be maybe like TBS or previous schemes that required an awful lot of uh, forms and administration and bureaucracy. This couldn't be more simpler. And the main reason uh, I wanted to come on this morning is to encourage businesses in Donegal to reassure them this is straightforward. It might take two minutes, five minutes of your time, and then you'll receive a payment direct into your account uh, in the next couple of weeks. It's an easy way for us in the government to get a quick cash injection into the accounts of so many businesses that have been facing really difficult increase of costs over the last number of weeks. But we really we really want to get this money paid out, Greg. Yeah, I get you. Come here, while you're on, I must ask you uh, your reaction to the, the announcement from Simon Coveney yesterday. Yeah, look, Simon has been a, a great friend and a bit of a mentor for me, not just in this department, but also... Uh, for all the all the years we were working on Brexit today, it was it was it was a bit of a, a bit of a surprise. But I, I completely understand his, his reasoning, and it, it goes to the essence of who Simon is as a Fine Gael man, as a as a government minister. And uh, whatever his next chapter is, I know he'll be absolutely succeeding. Maybe I hope he gets to spend a little bit more time with his young family as well. Uh, some people are saying, you know, what's going on in Fine Gael? What is going on in Fine Gael with so many choosing not to to seek re-election? You know, uh, big names stepping um, away. It's very unusual for two, uh, you know, uh, young politicians like Leo Varadkar, Simon Coveney, during the term of a government, say, right, you know, for whatever reason, I'm off, even if it is to spend more time with your family. That in in and of itself is is not something you see very often. It can be applauded, of course. Is there something deeper happening within the party that the public yet aren't aware of? 
No, absolutely not. And I think these decisions are absolutely something that should be applauded. And it's something that happens a lot more uh, in modern times across lots of different careers and vocations, but perhaps didn't happen in our parents' generation where people did did a job for 40 years the minute they left school and that was that. But I think if you look at the, the profile of, of all the many people um, who have announced that they're stepping down, I think particularly of, of Joe McHugh in Donegal as well, they've all been senior cabinet ministers. They've all contributed around about 20 years of service to our national parliament they've all got amazing careers behind them and they're at a stage where yeah. they can move on to something else perhaps within politics or perhaps within something uh, something different but i think for finnegan more generally this is an opportunity for renewal we've been in government now for three terms coming up to 14 years we will be seeking uh, a mandate at the next general election to return to government for an unprecedented four terms we think we can do that but it'll be under a new leadership uh, in Simon, who will become our youngest ever Taoiseach, mm-hmm. and it'll be a, a freshening up and a renewal of the party you were, you, on the back of. I think you were one of his, you, you know, loudest cheerleaders, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, as soon as speculation uh, began as to who might replace Leo for Radcar, what changes do you see? Because Finnegan have a year effectively if, if the government mm-hmm. goes full term. What changes do you see policy wise? Uh, being made in terms of, you know, maybe actually having a sense of what the public are thinking on issues such as, you know, uh, on the hate crime bill, on immigration, uh, matters like that that really, really are, uh, you know, the conversations in the front rooms and the kitchens are ar- around the country. Do you believe that Fine Gael needs to adjust its policies on some of these key issues? Well, I think there's an acceptance that Fine Gael needs to really tighten up uh, its policies and its message. Ultimately, the programme for government, Greg, isn't changing. We're still committed to that. We're committed to our three-party coalition. But if you look at the ministerial reefs that Fine Gael has control of, certainly when it comes to justice, we want to really focus on public peace, policing, on the sort of the, the order side of the law and order debate a lot more. And in my own brief, and why I'm on with you this morning is we really want to put a huge focus mm. on small businesses on the SMEs across the country providing them with not just the support but the environment to not only be able to stay open but also th- mm. also thrive those are two key areas but more broadly um, for Simon it's all about equality of opportunity giving everyone the best opportunity uh, to succeed in Ireland regardless of where, where they come from but we have a huge amount of challenges coming down the line despite the fact that we are a brilliant country we just need to realise all the opportunities and uh, also to um, another journalist leaving uh, journalism to join um, the political movement, so to speak. Do you think that sort of talks to a, an unhealthy relationship between uh, politicians, politics and and those that are supposedly there to, to hold them to account? Not really. I think um, anyone who makes a decision to, to leave journalism to go into a, perhaps a, a different line of work or a more st- stable line of work using public relations or within government uh, does so you know very open-minded and it doesn't reflect at all on their previous professional experience i know if i look well, at the couple of journalists that have if they if they, if they, the did, if, years, if they delete of, their social media i suppose uh, you, you know i'm not saying that's happened in every case but often it does happen there's obviously something in the background they don't want to interfere with their future career well, maybe it allows for them to provide for an element of separation mm. between their previous career and their and their newer future career, and that happens in lots of different okay. walks of life. But certainly, I think of the journalist in question. I've had my fair share of uh, critical pieces and and tough interviews at the at the hands of their pen. So mm. it'll be interesting to see their their changeover and, and I wish just, them well. Just very finally, uh, Neil, and I'll, I'll I'll do a quick recap on on because of a couple of questions. You, you know, obviously now uh, Simon Harris is looking to secure the support of independents um, uh, because he will need their support to actually become Taoiseach. It is a vote of the doll. Uh, this is something I've mentioned in the show, so I might as well say it to your face. Should we not, as the public, considering it's probably our money that's going to be bartered with to give the independents what they might want to secure their support, should that not all be, you know, put out in a document before any vote in the doll so we know exactly, as, as the taxpayers, what's going on? Well, I think what Simon said quite clearly, firstly, the three government parties do have a majority in the doll, so we don't need the support of the independents, but a number of them have supported the government before, and they haven't done it for any sort of, um, any, any price as such. Well, and that's not quite Simon true. That's not quite true, because the, the details of, of the cost of it were published uh, in the newspapers last week from the last round of support for uh, a vote to no confidence. 
But what Simon has said quite clearly is he'll talk to everyone. He's talking to the independents who previously supported the government and if they're keen to support the government again, which a number of them have indicated long before he met them, then he's more than happy okay. to do so. And of course, we will discuss that in public um, and answer every question that we can. Brilliant. I look forward to asking the questions. So two quick questions. Can a registered charity uh, exempt from paying rates apply for this cost of living increase support? It's not cost of living, it's cost of doing business support. It's for businesses okay. as opposed to charity, so it needs to be people who pay commercial rates. A couple of questions about people who are still paying off last year's rates or are in arrears. Can they qualify for this grant? Uh, it depends on each local authority, but if they engage with Donegal County Council, they should be able to. Uh, OK, Minister for Enterprise, Neil Richmond, and maybe a full minister uh, after the reshuffle. Who's to say? Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Rick. Take care of yourself. OK, back with more after the news and obituary notices. Waterworld Bundoran is back for the 2024 season and is open every day over the Easter holidays until April 7th. Experience the three-lane multi-slide, the Wizard, the Wave Pool and Rapids, the Twister Tornado and Gravity Speed Slides, the Pirates Galleon Ship and more. Booking essential. Get your tickets now at waterworldbundoran.com slash booking and find us on Facebook. Step out of the ordinary and into the new Lexus LBX because this is the luxury compact SUV reimagined in every detail where style, elegance and innovation define a new kind of driving experience. It's your world. Make it extraordinary. Experience the new LBX hybrid at your Lexus retailer available with a range of flexible payment options. Lexus. Experience amazing. Your local dealer is Lexus Letterkenny. Have you discovered the Donegal Boardwalk Resort Restaurant yet? Open every Wednesday to Sunday. Take leisurely strolls along the boardwalk and treat yourself to light bites, hearty lunches or comforting dinners. Complete your stay in our cosy lodges. Explore more at DonegalBoardwalkResort.ie Unwind, dine and savour the moment at Donegal Boardwalk Resort Carrigart. Is the appearance of your staff important to your business? It's the first point of contact for customers when entering your premises. At CM Embroidery in Letterkenny, they have a huge range of clothing covering all areas of the workplace. It's widely known that customers warm to and trust employees that present themselves well. Have your company name embroidered or printed on all your work uniforms. Contact CM Embroidery on 07491 28097 and get your staff looking their best. For day-to-day -day healthcare needs, generations have trusted the experienced staff at McGee's Chemist Letterkenny. From coughs and colds to aches and pains, from vitamin supplements to first aid essentials. McGee's have what you need, when you need it, with a full prescription service available daily. McGee's Chemist Main Street Letterkenny. For healthcare help and advice you can always trust. Online and on the Highland Radio app. This is Highland Radio News. Good morning, it's 10 o'clock. Donald Kavanagh at the news desk. The mother of one of the victims of the Crystal explosion says she believes the thought of rebuilding on the site of the tragedy is horrifying. Donna Harper, the mother of 14 year old Leona, was informed of the plans last week. Since then, a petition has been set up by family friend Gemma Heaney to halt the reconstruction of a shop on the site where 10 people lost their lives on October 7th, 2002, and instead establish a memorial. Donna told today's 9 till noon show that coming just after two arrests, news of the plan to rebuild was very upsetting. But she's encouraged by the success of the petition. The last that I looked at it, there was 720 odd signatures on it. Complete strangers, people just saying that it should be left a memorial site. When I had the, the call to my door, um, that was just on the heels of an arrest. There was two people arrested. They were released without charge. Um, so as you can imagine, as a family, the emotions were there, very upsetting. Even to think that there was an arrest made um, and then just to have a few days later to have somebody call at your door to say that they're going to build okay. on the site where you just lost your daughter. So emotions were very high. The funeral mass of Donegal woman Una Bowden and her two daughters takes place today. The 47-year-old died along with 14-year-old Kira and 10-year-old Saoirse in a road crash on the N17 in Mayo last week. The funeral procession will leave Una's father John's home this morning at 11 for funeral mass at 12 noon in St Eunan's Church, Raffoe. 
Gothi are continuing to appeal for information in connection with an alleged assault and endangerment incident in Donegal on Easter Sunday night. Gothi were called to Green Nevada near Burt at around 10 following reports of a disturbance. A woman in her 30s was subsequently brought to Letterkenny University Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A man in his 30s arrested a short time later appeared before a special sitting of Letterkenny District Court yesterday. Gothi are urging witnesses or anyone who observed a red Kia Sportage in the vicinity on Sunday evening to come forward. Four people escaped serious injury following an arson attack on a house in Oma in the early hours of this morning. The blaze broke out at a property in the Winters Grove area just before quarter to four. With more, here's McKenna Clark. It's believed the fire at the property in Winters Grove was started after flammable liquid was poured through the letterbox of the house. Extensive damage has been caused to the interior of the property. The four occupants of the house were treated at the scene for smoke inhalation. Detective Inspector Winters has described the incident as extremely reckless, which could have had very serious consequences. An investigation is underway and police are appealing to anyone who may have any information, including CCTV, dash cam or mobile phone footage, to contact them on the non-emergency number 101. The Mayor of Donegal Town has announced he will contest the upcoming local elections. Porrick Kennedy will run as an independent candidate in the Donegal electoral area. He's held the honorary title since 2018 and says he believes he can provide a much-needed voice for the people of the area. There's a €600 Euro price gap between the most expensive and cheapest creches in Donegal. A survey of 220 creches across the country carried out by the Irish Independent reveals creches in South Dublin are the most expensive in the country at €1,578 Euro per child per month compared to the least expensive crash in Monaghan charging 340 In Donegal, quotes for full-day care in creches range from €600 to €1,200. Euro. Seven people are now confirmed dead with dozens of others injured after a power earthquake shut Taiwan. It's estimated to have measured 7.4. That would be the strongest to hit the island in at least 25 years. The tremor damaged buildings and caused a small tsunami which hit southern Japanese island. No one was reported injured there. Emily Feng, a journalist in Taiwan, says the low number of deaths is because infrastructure has improved. Last time Taiwan had an earthquake at this scale, 1999, 2,000 people died. Those buildings that you're seeing that collapsed or are off kilter, for the most part, at the exception. In Taipei, my building has been swaying for the last couple of hours, but Taiwan has really earthquake-proofed itself. And the road between Dunlo and Mahari will be blocked for a time today to facilitate the finalisation of essential roadworks. The key road will close at 12 noon, until 12 noon, excuse me, at Tuberkeen for 600 metres. A temporary diversion is in place. Weather well, forecast now mostly cloudy this morning with rain in part. Scattered showers will develop this afternoon along with some sunny spells. Top temperatures today of 8 to 11 degrees Celsius. And that's Highland Radio News. We're back with news headlines again at 11. Check all of today's news, of course, on our website, highlandradio.com. But for now, from the news team, have a very good morning. The obituary notices for this Wednesday morning, April the 3rd. The death has occurred of Rose Byrne, Nate Breslin, Roxburgh at Kilcar. Rose's remains are reposing at her late residence in Roxburgh at Kilcar. Removal from there on Friday morning at half past ten, going to St Carthus Church Kilcar for 11 o'clock funeral mass with burial afterwards in the local cemetery. Rose's funeral mass can be viewed on mcn.live. The death has occurred of Ivy Carlin, Nate Doherty, 47 Drumquin Road, Castle Derg, reposing at the family home today from 12 noon. Funeral from the family home on Friday morning at quarter past 10 for Requiem Mass at 11 o'clock in St Francis of Assisi Church, Drumna Bay, interment afterwards in the adjoining churchyard. The Mass can be viewed via the parish webcam. Family flowers only please donations in lieu if desired to cancer research, care of any family member. Family time please from 10 o'clock to 12 noon and on the morning of the funeral. The death has taken place of Alan Lord, Cashel, Kindrum, Fanad and formerly Warrington, Cheshire, UK. Requiem Mass will be held for Alan at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning in St Mary's Church, Fana Volte, followed by a private cremation. Family flowers only please, donations in lieu of flowers if desired, to Fanad Daycare Centre, care of any family member or McAteer funeral directors. 
The death has occurred of Patter Duffy, Capri Bally Buffet, remains reposing at his late residence. Fiona leaving his residence tomorrow morning at 20 past 10 for requiem mass in the Church of Mary Immaculate Stranorler at 11 o'clock, interment in Drumbo Cemetery. The requiem mass will be streamed live on churchservices.tv. Family time from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock and on the morning of the funeral. The death has taken place of Mary Devine, nay Kelly, 65 Murlock Road, Glenmornan, reposing at her home. Funeral leaving her home tomorrow morning at 25 past 10 for requiem mass in St Joseph's Church, Glenmornan at 11 o'clock, interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Donations in lieu of flowers, please, to Motor Neuron Association, Kev Quigley Funeral Directors. Family time, please, from 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock. The death has taken place of Bridie Gamble, nay Porter, 18 Glebe Park, Sion Mills, reposing at her home. Fiona leaving her home tomorrow morning at 20 past 10 for requiem mass in St Teresa's Church, Sion Mills at 11 o'clock, interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family time please from 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock. The requiem mass can be viewed live via the parish webcam. The deaths have taken place of Una Mary Bowden, Nate Carlin and her daughters Kira Mary Bowden and Saoirse Bowden, Mike Cullen Galway. Una, Kira and Saoirse are reposing at the home of Una's father John Carlin, Milltown Ruffo. Funeral from there this morning at 11 o'clock for requiem mass at 12 noon in St Junan's Church Ruffo with interment afterwards in the family plot in the old graveyard convoy. Family time please before the funeral this morning. Family flowers only please. Donations in loot to the Madras Centre in Galway. Care of Terence McClintock, funeral director. The funeral mass can be viewed live on MCN Media or the Parish of Rafo webcam. The death has taken place of William Billy Doherty, formerly of Corina Letterkenny, Luton and Coolock in Dublin. William's funeral mass will take place at St Paul's Church, Airfield, Coolock, Dublin 13 at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with burial at the Balgriffin Cemetery. And the death has taken place of James Jim Carson, 7 Binion Avenue, Letterkenny. Fiona from Jim's late residence this morning at half past ten, going to St Junan's Cathedral, Letterkenny, for 11 o'clock requiem mass, which can be viewed on churchservices.tv, followed by interment in Conwall Cemetery. Family time, please, before the funeral this morning. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu of flowers, if desired, to the Haematology Unit, Letterkenny University Hospital, and the Donegal Hospice, care of any family member. For family information and more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. for even longer. Enjoy even more Aldi quality and value with our extended opening hours. Spend more time filling up your trolley with award winners, offers you can't refuse and savings on your cravings. 8am till 10pm Monday to Saturday and 9am to 9pm on Sundays and bank holidays. That's more time to spend less money on the things you love. Follow the path to lower prices. Go all Aldi. Location variation supply. Visit stores.aldi.ie for details. And now... Imro's 2023 Best Local or Regional News Programme, The Voice of the Northwest, The Nine Till Noon Show, with Greg Hughes. Good morning to you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on the programme. A very welcome back if you were with us for the uh, first hour of the show. Let's uh, have a look at some of your comments coming in so far this morning. A caller says, why should taxpayers have to donate money to business? If a business cannot afford to pay their own bills, then let them go out of business. No one is giving €5,000 to the rest of us, the government, for the rich only. Well, I mean, these are small businesses and uh, I suppose maybe it's an acceptance that um, there are external factors beyond the business's control, such as, you know, wage increases, um, holiday increases that were brought in by government, uh, electricity price increases, which are are not their fault either. Um, So a lot of the issues facing many businesses are not of their own doing. Uh, ask him how many companies don't have all the rates paid. Do we get it? I did ask that. He says it's down to each individual council. So contact Donegal County Council. Um, hi. After the Oma bombing, a memorial garden was built, but not on the bomb site. The bomb site was all rebuilt as a shopping area as it had been before the bombing. 
Another caller says the wider Creaseler community are devastated, but is this the way forward? The corner of the garden was used as a memorial for the candles and prayers. Why is this not sufficient? As a Creaseler resident, we need the shop, the heart of our community. We don't visit the area, as the Harpers have stated. This is our home community and area. And therein lies the difficulty in... Um, people's feelings and emotions but also actually in discussing this public because I do understand that there are quite a number of people with that view out there and we appreciate you sharing that with us. A caller says there should be no building on the Creasler disaster site. It's ridiculous that the uh, owners are proposing to build on the same site. Why is Greg entertaining the idea? Because we are simply giving everyone uh, a point of view on this and uh, I'm not coming at it from one angle or another. A graveyard should be retained as a sedentary area, a memorial garden with a lawn and flower benches for people to sit and reflect with a fountain in the middle symbolising peace and hope, says another caller. I agree that site should not be built on, but the man that owns the site needs compensating for it, so whatever funds are left should be used to pay for it. Uh, Donna Hugh and Anne-Marie are brave, strong people. It takes guts to speak out when you've lost a loved one. I hope that you can find the strength to carry on for your loved ones. Another caller says, I don't think there should be a business rebuilt there. 9-11 built a memorial. The business will get their insurance back again in years to come. They should wait it out for another site. The families, their families and extended families will live with this for the rest of their lives. Now, also what we don't know is the views of all of the... Uh, bereaved all of those that lost loved ones as well we heard from uh, donna and hugh and Anne marie but that uh, is n I, I don't know the feelings of uh, all of those affected by this um let me see <laughs> this is well this is on a I'll, I'll come back to these other ones the red cross fund money left has been left in a trust i'm told and they are consulting with the communities and families as to what to do with it families and communities have been invited to public meetings on this and it's a matter of public record uh, says a listener there uh, the community is divided on the rebuilding. There are many issues. They've tried to get another site, but it's not possible. The community does need these facilities. We can't turn every site into memorial. Where would it end? The lack of support for the petition says uh, the community disagrees. Um, so what? I think they have seven or 800 signatures. I believe that the site in Creasler should be made into a park with benches and flowers. You can't rebuild on a site where people died. Another, my daughter is the same age as Leona was. So I cannot imagine someone rebuilding where my daughter lost her life. I completely understand where she's coming from. It should not be rebuilt there. Good morning, Greg. Regarding the Creaseless site of the explosion, the community should get together and buy the site from the owners and make the site into a memorial garden for all those who lost their lives. But we also have to accept that, and again, I, I, I'm conscious that I'm from outside the area, we also have to accept that for some people they would see that, that it's important that um, that that's what was seen as the heart of the town is restored to it for Chrysler to move forward. There's a lovely wee memorial with a plaque and photos of the beautiful people who lost their lives in the chapel, and I know they will always be remembered, but unless you've walked in my shoes, it's a difficult call for people not involved to have an opinion on. If there's a will, surely a way forward can be found. Um... Hi, Greg. We need our petrol station and shop with Delhi and Butcher's back. It's nice all the way it is. We have a shop, but not the same. Nobody will ever forget what happened in Creaseler that day, and victims will always uh, be remembered. Well done, Greg. You were very good and sensitive during the interview with Donna, Hugh and Anne-Marie. It is a very insensitive to land at someone's door after a tragedy like that. I really feel for the families, and the site should not be rebuilt on. And uh, hi, why is Greg obsessed with transgenderism? Men can never be women, no matter what they wear or do to their bodies. They are men. Stop calling them women. It's an insult to women. Never did. And I'm not going to be. Um, I'm not going to be harangued into not discussing things because, and then to be accused of being obsessed with transgenderism. The hate speech laws came into effect in Scotland on April first. Every single newspaper is uh, discussing J.K. Rowling's comments uh, in advance of those hate laws coming in and uh, also um, post them coming in. There's talk of hate speech laws coming to effect in Ireland. There's also an ongoing conversation about transgenderism and uh, in sport um, and in women's spaces. I'm not upset simply by talking about something which, uh, which is covered extensively in the newspapers. I am certainly not obsessed with it. 
uh, but why would I not talk about it? And what the hell's it got to do with uh, saying that I'm obsessed with it and then talking about uh, your opinion on it? That's fine. You believe that men can never be women. That's up to you. Um, and uh, stop calling them women. It's an insult to women, says another listener. Telling the truth hurts at times. A man cannot become a biological woman or vice versa, says the listener. They can pretend to be one, but in reality, they are not one. Well done to J.K. Rowling, uh, seeking the truth and justice. Trans activists are abusing anyone who says the truth. Uh, look at one person in sports. If this continues, women's sport will all have former males winning everything. Look what they've done to uh, Grain Lynham. Ordinary men and women must no longer remain quiet. Grain Lynham, not a name I'm familiar with, but listen, thank you very much for that. Um, right, OK. Morning, Greg. The reason the TDs are stepping down is they now realise the damage they've done to the country and have failed the people and are no longer wanted, knowing they will get a real kick up the backside come election time. And uh, lastly, and completely on a different note, we request, uh, please play a request for a very special dad and granddad. His name is Desi Harkin. He's from Dromony in Letterkenny and is celebrating his birthday today. Have a wonderful day, Desi. Love from your daughter, Tina, and granddad, uh, children, uh, your grandchildren, Zara, Sky, Jed, and Lily. Lovely name, Zara, Sky, Jed, and Lily. What's Jed short for? Uh, listen, OK, thank you very much indeed for that. Have a great day, Desi. It's time for a Vision Ireland bingo on Highland Radio. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. Playing on a blue sheet. Reference number is S8. It's game 14. Today's numbers are... 66 45 34 82 6 18 15 71 20 and 68 Phone your claim to 91048 before 8 tonight leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book Get all your Vision Ireland bingo information at HighlandRadio.com Sheridan Security, now introducing Zero Wire Smart Alarm Systems. Zero Wire, zero mess and a real peace of mind. With a simple press of a button, your alarm can be set or unset or download the free app and control it from your phone. Call us today on 074 912 6025 and get your alarm from €299. Euro. Stay local, stay safe and protect what you value most with Sheridan Security Systems. Cruise in style with a brand new Nissan at iMotors. Whether it's a brand new Nissan Qashqai with 3.9% finance, the Nissan X-Trail, the proud winner of the large SUV of the year, or Ireland's best value EV, the Nissan Leaf with 0% finance. Visit us today at iMotors.ie to avail of these limited offers. A public interest message from Donegal County Council. Attention all commercial rates customers. Your commercial rates demand for 2024 has now issued and Donegal County Council would appreciate payment as soon as possible. We have also written to customers with details of the increased cost of business ICOB grant. This grant is a vital measure for small and medium businesses. Subject to certain eligibility criteria, applications must be made online by the 1st of May 2024. Further information and details on the scheme can be found in your letter or on our website donegalcoco.ie or by contacting your local revenue collector or by calling the council on 07491 53900. Donegal County Council, supporting local businesses. Now, in the first hour, we uh, had uh, what is, I think, by all accounts, a difficult conversation about the future of the site of the Creasle explosion. There are um, at least two families who are opposed to any plans, and I understand plans are, are to be lodged to uh, rebuild on that site, but also understanding that there are difference, differences of opinions within uh, the community. Um, but also very conscious, too, that having these types of conversations can trigger emotions in other people's uh, lives as well who've suffered a great loss. Bernie joins me on the programme now. Bernie, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate uh, you speaking to me. How are you keeping, Bernie? 
Hello, Greg. Yes, I'm keeping good. Yes, not too bad. Okay. Enjoying the Easter holidays. <laughs> That's good. And you have to, don't you? Um, you yeah. lost your husband, uh, Manus. I don't think you mind me mentioning his his, his name, Bernie. Um, not at all. In, in tragic yeah. circumstances. And it, I mean, obviously you felt it on a personal level, but it was a... A loss that was felt so deep uh, in in the business community, in the rallying community, um, and um, just just an awful, awful tragedy. Uh, but just sort of following mm. on from that conversation, and and if it's intertwined, let us know, Bernie. But what what did you do uh, at, at the site of of where Manus uh, lost his life? Yes, um, the day that happened was the twenty third of June, two thousand and nineteen, and it was the Donegal Rally, and he. Um, passed away tragically as well and um, um, it affected so many people, it affected families um, the wider circle, Donegal a lot of people say to me that there was a dark shadow came over Donegal that, that day and affected uh, politics because he was a member of Fianna Fáil um, he had a business and he was um, in the um, business and rallying community but since that, we have made a garden, a memorial garden down in where he passed away. And it brings so much solace for all of us, his family, myself, my children, and a lot of uh, in the wider circle. Um, a lot of people visit there. It's become a memorial garden. I have to be thankful for um, the man down there, John McConaughey, if I don't mind saying his name, who was able to give me that area, the small wee area, and I uh, met a beautiful friends of mine went together and they made a lovely wee garden where we set flowers we set a tree and uh, my brother made a bench and it's overlooking Shanna Lake and um, it's just so peaceful down there it's just beautiful and sometimes people leave um, wee monies and I would put it into different charities that Manus loved you know when, you know, people just leave wee coins things like that and you know it's just it's lovely. My children love it, and we love it. And I bring down a cup of tea, and it's it's really nice. Beautiful in the summertime. Yeah, it is. Been there a few times myself, uh, Bernie. It is. It is. Um, it is a, a beautiful, tranquil uh, spot. How important is it for you and, and the wider family, I suppose, to be able to sort of sit there and reflect and chat and laugh? I'm sure as well, uh, Bernie. At, at the at the site of where Manus lost his life, because obviously also to uh, where he's buried is a, is a second place that you might visit, um, but that's more familiar to us as the wider population, if you know what I mean. So, how important is it, sort of, to have this space where Manus passed to be able to go and reflect or do whatever he's want to do as a family? Well, it's the last place where he had his last breath and it, it was the last place I seen him. It was the last place that I I was with him holding his hand and, you know, um, I wasn't ready to let go. Mm. I wasn't ready, you know, to let it slip away or there was something so peaceful about that area. There's something, uh, you know, some people, you know, sometimes say, go and give me a sign or tell mm. me something. And an odd time you do, you don't always, you just there does be small wee signs that you feel, and maybe it helps you along that journey and path and grief. Mm -hmm. um, for Manus' parents, they visit there every Sunday, mm -hmm. every Sunday without fail since his passing. Um, it's, uh, it brings you, you know, my daughter was down not that long ago and she was saying she just felt some kind of peace sitting there on her own, just in silence. Yeah. Um, and Which is a mum that must be very lovely. nice to to hear because you have obviously mm -hmm. you obviously you deal with your own loss, don't you? But you're also very concerned as to how it affects particularly the younger people, uh, you know. So to okay. hear from her that she feels connected to her dad there and gets some peace or solace from it, that's a comfort to you as well, mm -hmm. in a way, isn't it, Bernie? It is, yes. Of course, every one of them has had, you know. My son, when he bought his first car, the first thing he wanted to do was go down to visit that area mm -hmm. and show, like, give him and say, look, Dad, I bought a new car. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very important for all of us. At some stage in life, you know, well, everyone just needs some sort of comfort and 
Mm. And um, that seems to be more of the place they go so, than where he's bur- actually buried. Yeah, so the, yeah. the the connection to Manus's memory and him as the person you remember, the connection feels stronger at, at, at that memorial site. Mm-hmm. It does, yeah. yeah. I can I, I cannot yeah. I, I can understand that I think I can. With that in mind, Bernie, I mean, are you are you just really on to talk about the importance of of having this for you and 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 for the family, or are you also sort of suggesting that it might be really important to those that lost ones uh, that lost family uh, members in in Chrysler? Well, <clears throat> the day that I heard about Chrysler, like that that black shadow came around Donegal, I felt it. I felt for there was ten members of people in that area that had is, was going to go through the same journey as as we went through, and you know for me it's it was it, it, you just break your heart for every member of that family and there you just think my God what you know what's going to happen now and you know they have you know they they were all there waiting on their loved ones to from that explosion mm-hmm. and. To and didn't know what was going to come. We were in the same, different kind of, different, mm-hmm. but different, but it was the same um, feeling, you know, you're just walking around that area and you're just hoping, no, please let it be no, and it's unfortunately not that way, but for the Creaselip community, and it is, it is um, it's going to be a place that every time you walk past or drive past that area, you seem to bless yourself and you say a wee prayer for every one of those families. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and the deceased so it, it, it's it, that can't be taken away and i think too in in your situation and everybody's different but there's there's a passage of time um you know and and and, and time yeah. does help it doesn't fix but it helps the thing here is is that mm-hmm. we're talking about the future of this site whilst an active investigation is ongoing and we're still short of of the mm. two year anniversary so obviously things are even extra extra raw Okay, listen, uh, Bernie, as I say, any, anyone, um, it is actually for anyone who wants to pay respect to uh, Manus, but also just to, to maybe reflect themselves. It is a beautiful, um, it is a beautiful remembrance uh, space um, for everyone. As you say, it's lovely that people uh, leave a few euro and you're able to donate that too to uh, charities close to Man- Manus. It keeps, it, it sort of keeps things going, doesn't it? Thanks so much for speaking to me, mm-hmm. Bernie, and I'm, I'm glad to hear things are okay and, and enjoy the rest of your Easter. Thank you, Greg. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Um, we've had contact from a, a third family um, bereaved. Um, obviously, Martina Anderson, um, Martina, I beg your pardon, Martina Martin uh, passed away. She was uh, working at the time of the explosion and uh, her family have been in contact to say our family member, Martina, was the only person killed in the explosion who was a worker. Coming from that perspective, we're totally against a shop being rebuilt there. So we've heard from from three of the um, uh, ten uh, families who've lost loved ones. There are different views, though, when we're um, not looking to... I'm not looking to, uh, in any way, cause division or to stir or anything like that. And I hope everyone knows my intentions are pure. And it's really just to give people... A platform if they wish to speak that's what we're doing here uh, another person's view is uh, with all due respect to the 10 families who lost a loved one and those injured i'm very much uh, i very much sympathize however as a family from creesla i can say we need a shop and petrol station there are no sites more suitable than the original site i'm sure a memorial garden will be included in the new plans where we can all pause and pay our respects the whole of creesla sympathizes with the families but i'd say a lot of creesla would love to see a new shop progressing as an individual who passes the site daily it does darken your spirit and i think a new shop and not Nice memorial garden will brighten the town and lift the spirits of us uh, who uh, have to live here, which is a view I fully and absolutely respect and uh, give um, uh, the platform to there. Passing it at the moment, and I do pass it, I choose sometimes to go that direction just to, uh, for, for my own personal reasons, um, and just the, the boarding is incredibly high and it's incredibly bleak, and not surprisingly it's bleak, of course, because of the, what happened there, but... Um, 
something will have to be done at some point uh, with that site. There's no doubt about that. OK, keep your calls and your comments uh, coming in to us. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Craving a taste of bliss by the water, the water's edge in Rathmullen. Join us from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. daily and sample our delicious new breakfast menu. We also have a daily lunch special from 12 p.m. Or why not sample our dinner menu from 4 p.m.? The water's edge Rathmullen, where tranquility and good food come together. Aurora's Hobbits, Crossroads, Kelly Gordons seek employees to join their expanding crash. Both full-time and part-time roles from 15 to 40 hours per week depending on the role. Must hold a QQI level 5 or equivalent. Please apply by email to aurorashobbits at gmail.com. Hello, I'm David Foley, Medical Herbalist. Are you suffering with stress, anxiety, insomnia? Then ask for Irish Botanica Peace and Calm, a traditional herbal remedy. Irish Botanica Peace and Calm has a naturally relaxing effect, ideal for stress, insomnia, jet lag, and pre-exam anxiety. Call us a natural way, let a Kenny Shopping Centre for more information. Harkins have been providing customers with quality fireplaces, stoves, and electric fires for over 30 years. And now you can experience the elegance of luxurious worktop from Harkins. Their experienced craftsmen can fabricate marble, quartz or granite worktops to your specification. So, if you're planning a new kitchen or bathroom or upgrading your existing one, Harkin Fireplaces can provide a quote for your quartz, marble or granite worktop. Visit their showroom in Ballybogan Lifford or call 914-1109 or visit them online at harkinfireplaces.ie Hi, Paddy here at Shane Conley Cars in Donegal Town. Are you looking to upgrade your car? With Shane Conley Cars, you'll find mix and models for every budget. Great finance options and may also accept trade-ins. Check out shaneconleycars.com or call in to us at Shane Conley Cars from Lonnerhur Road, Donegal Town. Ryan Adams is back on tour in 2024. Join Highland Radio on our trip to Dublin to see the man himself at the Three Arena on Tuesday the 21st of May 2024. Your trip includes luxury transfers, bed and breakfast at the four-star Carton Hotel Blanchestar, your standing ticket to the show and a shopping trip to Dublin City Centre the following day. Find out more on the outlet at highlandradio.com or call us on 074 9125 now, the WhatsApp and text number is 0866025000, 0866025000, or you can give us a call on 0749125000. I've just been, I've just, <coughs> excuse me, uh, hi, I've just passed up through Loch Salt in Glen, and there's nine bags of rubbish which have been left dotted along the side of the road. Now, I travel Loch Salt a lot and never seen this, and after Easter weekend, I'm not sure if it is uh, or is not visitors that have done this. But if so, we uh, have some respect. This wouldn't be done in their own townland. Now, I think that's, it's actually quite the opposite. I don't know, um, but I did come up that road myself recently. That looks to me very much like uh, tidy towns, that there's been a bit of a clean-up there, and those bags have been left for the council to pick up. Now, I'm open to correction, uh, but it seems very unlikely to me. It, in fact, it would be shocking, and we'll return to it big time if it is the case, that if people have left rubbish there, I think that looks to me like... a. a clean up operation and the bags have been left there to be collected by the council I am sure there's someone involved in that if it's the latter or indeed the former please let us know 086 but it just looks to me like a clean up rather than a um, a dumping uh, if that makes sense Jennifer is with us on the show hi Jennifer yeah, hi Greg um, how's, the, how's the wee one Oh, he's he's okay now, thank you. Right, um, yeah, he just got a big shock, but he's okay. Thanks. All right, well, we'll hear how. Um, this goes back to Easter Sunday in the Swan Park area. Uh, tell us what happened. Yeah. Um, well, me and my son were out for a bike ride going through Swan Park and um, just enjoying, enjoying a nice sunny day. And um, we just, we were kind of taking it dead easy. I'd just spoken to him, you know, just saying really easy because it was so, so busy in the park with it being a bank holiday. Um, and we were going along and the next thing, a little um, spaniel just kind of darted out across the path in front of him. Um, he hit the dog and went flying off over the handlebars um, and tore all his trousers, cut his leg, um, banged his head um, and was kind of laying there on the floor. So I went down to him, you know, check he's okay. 
And luckily other people had stopped with the crash and, you know, somebody shouted out who's, who's is this dog. Now, before you get to that, at this point, uh, Jennifer, at this point you would expect Mm -hmm. the dog owner to run across and say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, Uh, the dog slipped off the lead or is he okay, what can I do? That's Mm -hmm. kind of what you would hope and expect to happen, that someone had erred or a mistake. You would. Now, pick it up from where a bystander uh, got involved and what happened next. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, somebody called out, who who does this dog belong to? The, the couple that owned the dog had kind of carried on walking and um, just ignoring the fact that the child had fell right in front of them. Um, and he said, well, it's my dog. Um, so he said, you know, he's just caused this crash. Um, can you put him on a lead, please? Because he was running around then. Uh, no, my dog doesn't go on a lead, was his response. Um, so the other lady that had stopped then, you know, said, can you please put him on a lead? Um no, I don't have to. There's no signs anywhere saying he should be on a lead. Um, absolutely no concern for the child on the floor. Um, so just, yeah, really, really frustrating. He actually didn't have a lead on his possession. So at that point, then there's kind of, you know, a little bit of um, tension, quite defensive behaviour from, from the, the dog owners just kind of repeating the fact that they didn't feel their dog goes on a lead. And you were an observer, really, weren't you? You weren't involved in that as much because I presume you were uh, on your honkers making sure your son was okay. Exactly. And I didn't want to be, you know, he was really upset at this point. So it was kind of going over above me, do you know Mm -hmm, what I mean? mm -hmm. But the other kind of, there was a few people stuck at that stage. Um, The dog owner then just walked off. um, I think they headed back towards where they'd come from, but whether they were in the car park, couldn't really see, um, but they just headed off. And yeah, at no point did they offer any help, like Oren, you know, couldn't ride his bike home. He was stuck on the floor there. So, you know, someone had to come come and get him for me. Um, but yeah, just really upsetting that, you know, accidents can happen, but basically it would have been completely avoided if the dog was on a lead, you know, uh, everyone could have enjoyed the walk, enjoyed the park. Um, without that danger. You, know, then, you, can't, can't, you couldn't predict can't, where can't, the dog was going to run. Of course, but Jennifer, the thing I can't figure out is what part of this story mm-hmm. I'm more perplexed by. A, that in a busy park, someone actually doesn't have a lead with them for their dog, right? Uh, lots of us don't yeah. like dogs. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to start off with. Secondly, that they didn't all of a sudden show extreme concern for your son's welfare. Yeah. And thirdly, to actually argue almost for the rights of their dog that it doesn't get leashed. Mm -hmm. So there's an awful lot to Mm -hmm. unpick there, Jennifer, as to what to be most shocked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's, I don't know, I don't know whether it's a sense of entitlement for the dog, that they should be able to kind of run free and do as they please, which, you know, in some areas is fine. But in a busy park, on a bank holiday, with children, so many children running around, um, people everywhere, you know, just just not appropriate. Um, and, yeah, somebody, you know, they they said, oh, there's no sign saying that you should be on a lead. Um, somebody else has said it was the law. I'm not, I'm not sure where the law stands on that. Yeah, but there's no, there's you know, no, their, sign. Their there's no sign in the park. No sign. Yeah, there's no sign in the park saying you can't run up and kick someone up the backside, but you don't do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have a feeling this person doesn't care too much about signs. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 yeah, no. I don't think no, they're worried. You know, be, yeah, I think if yeah. there was a sign there, they'd be going, stuff the signs. I'll do what I mm-hmm. want. My dog yeah. doesn't get tied. Yeah. No. It's really unfortunate, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, like, I hope it depends on, on your son's personality, Jennifer. But, I mean, is it now going to make them a a, a, ner- a nervous cyclist or, or to be a wee bit worried about dogs? Or if you say in a couple of weeks, do you want to go for a cycle um, in Swan Park? And they go, oh, no, not today, Mum. And you don't really know what sort yeah. of the implications of, of this experience is for their for for them. Not I'm not yeah, overstating I mean, it either, like you know. But mm-hmm. yeah, no. Thankfully for 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 him, he's you know he's pretty confident on his bike. He loves dogs, so um, it won't cause him any problems. But I think the general kind of consensus is there are so many children that are you know and adults as well that are really afraid of dogs and that find Swan Park and. Yeah. You know, it's just a bit of a no-go like, I'm not area afraid, for them I'm not afraid so of dogs. dogs. I'm not really afraid of dogs, mm-hmm. right? But I don't want someone's smelly dog 
sniffing <laughs> and yeah. jumping around. I simply don't want it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, lick its yeah. own bum and then come up and jump and lick me. I don't like. I have no problem with dogs. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think you have to be feared of them. Keep your dogs in your own space. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, the solution is pretty simple. Just keep yeah. the dog on the lead. And we have a dog ourselves. You know, when we're walking, the dog's on a lead. You know, it's, it's just easy, isn't it, really? It, it makes sense for, for everybody. He has a nice walk. Other people can enjoy the park. Um, it's just common sense, but obviously not for everybody. Mm. Um, Does it but, matter yeah. uh, if I ask, maybe it's irrelevant, did you get the impression these people were local visitors? Did they just think maybe the bunk van is their um, play yard? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I I didn't recognise them. Um, you know, I'd walk that past quite a lot. Um, I didn't recognise them, but I wouldn't I wouldn't know kind of where. Yeah. See, I, I just I, I've from. noticed out and about in the roads the last week, and I don't know how controversial this is or isn't, but there is you do get a sense from some people that come into Donegal or travel to Donegal. I don't know where they're from. They could be from Dublin, Derry, some other place beginning with D. I haven't a clue. Denmark. That. You're kind of in their way that, that that this is their sort of holiday spot and, you know, they'll hold the mm -hmm. middle of the road, they'll park wherever they like. I don't know. It, 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 as I say, it's almost yeah. as if we're just yeah. a big butlins sometimes um, for people to kind of do whatever they like. <laughs> mm. But anyway, all right, Jennifer, I'm glad to hear that your mm. son's OK. I think you've been really fair and balanced in, in, in talking about how that, look, it's not going to have. He's still a confident cyclist. He's, he still loves dogs. He's got your own dogs. That's not about the impact it's going to have on him. It's just the whole scenario and how it yeah. unfolded. OK. Jennifer, Just, yeah, hopefully, easily avoided. Hopefully, yeah. we get another dry day at some point. You can get out on the bikes again. <laughs> yeah, take care. All right, of thank bye you, bye, Jennifer. For that All right, story. bye bye. Oh eight six sixty, uh, twenty five thousand. Um, Katrina Devlin, Montgomery in Clonmany has a big birthday today from the Montgomerys in Falcara, and thankfully they didn't put the age on it because I always feel awkward reading out someone's age, but I do it anyway because it's not up to me to police people's uh, thoughts. But anyway, Katrina Devlin Montgomery, you're in Clonmany. Have a wonderful day uh, on your birthday. I just want to give a quick mention to the uh, big competition. We've got. It's not a big competition. It's a big draw, really. I don't know how you'd frame it. That's running at the moment. It's a €10,000 uh, home makeover um, thanks to in association with our friends at uh, Foy's they will help actually if you win they will help with the design of, of, of your room or rooms or whatever it might be if you really wanted to go to town on one or two rooms uh, you could put all the cash into that maybe actually you have a conservatory that's just not properly furnished uh, you could really make it uh, another room that kind of stuff it's a 10,000 euro home makeover but as well as that there's 500 cash and you can do with what you wish you can do with what you wish. You can do. You can spend the cash however you wish. That's being given away Friday week on John Breslin's show. So it's fifteen thousand euro in total worth uh, in association with Foyne Company. Now, also, I have uh, two and a half grand to give away on Friday. Two thousand five hundred euro. If you want to be with a chance to win the two and a half grand on Friday and the fifteen effectively uh, valued prize the following Friday. Uh, it's time to get your ticket. How do you do that? Well, you can go onto our website and you'll see the link there. Click in and you can buy your tickets. Uh, the most you will spend is €10. Euro. One ticket for €10. Euro. You get six for 50 uh, 10 for 80 And uh, it's safe and secure to buy your tickets there. If you want to get involved in that, uh, also you can give us a call on 074 91 We will hook you up. Uh, the closing date for entries is Friday the 12th of April. Uh, but if you want to be with a chance to win the two and a half grand this Friday, you've got today and tomorrow to sort that out, OK? So if you want to, if you've got the money and you want to get involved, it could be you. Right, we're going to go to uh, Clonmany and Clet after these. The Big Easter Sale is now on at Cooney's Home Interiors with 20% off all departments, excluding existing offers. That's huge discounts on all suites, tables, beds and accessories. We have many X-Display models in beds and sofas all reduced to clear. Treat yourself to a bargain at the Easter Sale in Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park. Sale ends Sunday the 7th of April. Discover full and part-time courses from Level 2 to Master's Degree at the College of Agriculture, Food and Rural Enterprise. CAFRI, Northern Ireland's Specialist Agri-Food and Land-Based College with campuses at Greenmount, Antrim, Lowry, Cookstown and Enniskillen. Study a course in food, agriculture, horticulture, equine, floristry, veterinary, nursing, land-based engineering or business. Make a difference. Book now to attend an open day, Tuesday 9th to Saturday 13th of April. Visit cafre.ac.uk. 
Here at Tesco Mobile, we've gone and opened a new phone shop in Letterkenny High. A great wee spot now for a few good deals. Like saving €320 Euro when you buy the iPhone 13 for €129.99 Euro on our €35 Euro plan high. So why not stop in and say hi, uh, hello, to Tesco Mobile High. This is Supermarket Mobile. Applies to new bill pay customers on our €35 Euro per month plan. 24-month contract offer ends 1st of May 2024. T's and C's apply. See tescomobile.ie. Pon Vrutinach an Togalach, Agus Detak Shi Vet from Hushach. Beggar Timple Dinner Wine as Gach Kuigura Ion and Vrutinach Dolchig Hospital. Is ein vaccine new on Hussant is far. Machail du Fein or the Foshta Machar in vaccine MMR, Toklar Kuitiv Serenashka or Harshkant Egan HSC in Nish, the Foshti Agzarina Fossa in Holaha. Con oil a mach on a vaccine oil, Agus Kun Quinna Ayenov, to our quarter HSE Punkai slash measles. On HSE. Highland Radio Weather Updates brought to you by Michael Hennies. Support a local Donegal business with Michael Hennies. From fashion to home essentials, find everything you need for any occasion. Shop Michael Hennies Bally Buffet for quality you can trust. All right, they've sent us a bit of an Ulster-wide uh, generic weather forecast, uh, but it says scattered showers developing this afternoon. Not Michael Henney's, by the way, Matt Aaron. Uh, scattered showers developing this afternoon, along with some sunny spells, highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. Still trying to get to the bottom of the bags on the Loxalt Road. Uh, as I say, I just presumed it was a tidy tans or a clean-up, uh, but we've had no confirmation of that as of yet. And another caller says, Greg, we've the same problem with people dumping bags of rubbish on our roads, and it's on the back roads between in Burnfoot and Bunkrana. It's not within the Tidy Towns area, and this is happening at night time also, but mostly every weekend. Again, I'm, you know what? I am actually really quite naive, and I actually look, uh, you know, for the best in people. Is it possible that people heading away after Easter, someone dumped their bags on the side of the road, and then they've continued to do it all the way up that road, and they're doing the same between Burnfoot and Bunkrana? That would be a big shocker to me, uh, I'll be honest with you. Please, any further information, let us know. Right, OK, let's stay on the roads. We're going to Clonmany and we're talking about the narrow roads. Uh, Colette, hiya, thanks for holding. I appreciate it. Good morning to you. Hello, Greg. How are you? I'm all right. So paint a picture for those not familiar with the roads around Clonmany or a particular road uh, that you uh, think that needs some attention. Yeah, it's just I'm talking about the road from the North Pole Bar into Clamani. It's a ribbon road with severe bends on it, and there was numerous fatal crashes on that road. Now, there's widths, wide widths at either side of the road so the county council could widen. It's up to the county council, councillors and the TDs to do that job. Mm. Now, the road is so narrow as I expressed two, three weeks ago on the radio, mm -hmm. that two cars meeting each other are nearly almost shaving past each other. Now, to prove that point, two weeks ago, two lorries met uh, just approaching a North Pole bar on that road, mm -hmm. and they couldn't pass one another, and one of them rolled over into the ditch, into the marshy field, which has a lock at the bottom of it, and landed on its roof. So I'm calling on all the TDs and all the county councillors to get the money from Go Dub Dublin government for the roads, the NRI or whatever you call them, National Roads Authority, um, to widen that road. Now, that road has never been widened since the 70s. When someone in the 70s was decapitated in a car crash on that road, not to talk about the eight young people that died and the elderly man coming from Bingo, from Bonkrana, where they met, and crashed. And another thing too is my friend, who is not from the area at all, from Limerick, in fact, lives in the sheltered uh, housing accommodation in Clamani Village at St. Co St. Colum Kills, it's called. Now, he has to visit his daughter every day in Bonkrana. He timorously drives up that road. And it, they will not allow him to drive down the road. He's too afraid to drive down the road. They have to go down with him and take another car down to collect his daughter, to bring her back to Bunkrana. Now, that's curtailing the freedom of the elderly people. And like that road is lethal. And why isn't Patrick McLaughlin and that, what do you call him, Conaghan, Charlie, Charlie McConlow, 
and all the county councillors, and there were numerous, Jack Murray's one of them, Sinn Féin, Raina Dunhey was one of them, Fianna Fáil, um, Nicholas Cross, an independent. Why are people not uh, crying out about that road? And why is the Donegal County Council not putting that in their budget to widen that road to claim money down from the government in their, in their you know, list? of needs for Donegal because Donegal is forgotten about and we have no TDs to represent us in this in this show and um you are of the view. You're the of semantic. the view of the. I think that's exactly where you're just about to go. You're uh, of the view that the local community should come uh, together on this issue. Exactly correct. The local community should form a committee like they had to do at, at, for the Cockhill Bridge in Bunkrana. The government and the TDs and the county councillors would not widen that bridge until a community formed together and cried out in one voice and then it was done. So I encourage the Clamani people to form a committee before the next election and make their manifesto known to the TDs that land on their street, knocking on their doors because feet on the ground as bums on seats. So don't give them their vote unless they're going to widen that road. That's all I can say, Greg. Okay, well, hopefully nothing happens <laughs> in, in between now and the next Oh, well, sure. Okay, right, Clet, listen, thanks for oh. that. I appreciate uh, you coming back on. Uh, Clet was on with us before since then. Uh, there was another uh, incident on that road, which is of great concern to her. Um, there were cleanups. <clears throat> excuse me. There were cleanups uh, on during the week and the areas are waiting for the council to lift the rubbish bags. That would be why there are rubbish bags lying in Glen. There were also cleanups in Termin and other areas. Okay, well, that's actually starting to make a bit more sense to me. As you know from the get-go, that's what I uh, that's what I thought uh, it, it could be. I couldn't imagine that people were routinely just dumping their stuff there. But anyway, you never know, you see. Fair play to Bernie, who took such courage to come on and tell her story of her memorial garden and what it means to their family. I hope that um, the owners of the Krishna shop are listening and realise how disrespectful it is to build a shop again where 10 people lost their lives, have a bit of respect for the deceased and their families. Now, again, and I really just want this to be a safe space for everyone to have their views. There are an awful lot of people who have different views to, to, to life and, and death who would be very much in favour of this site being used again for a shop. They're probably less likely to speak out because they don't want to be seen as being insensitive or disrespectful to those who lost their lives. But this is not, you know, a, a small group of individuals with one view and then everybody else having a different view. There are um, <clears throat> many different views uh, within Chrysler and, by, and, and also some of those affected directly by this as to what, the future might be for this site. So I just want, I don't want the texts are coming in and I get that and I'm reading them, but I just don't want the people in the wider community to think that there is, a, you know, a family, let's just say, who have one uh, vision and then everyone else have a different. It's not really like that. There are many different views amongst many, many people. Greg, I'd like to think all this money that was gathered up elsewhere or everywhere for the Creesla people uh, who were hurt through this tragedy, that the money should remain in Creesla to help the people. I think that, for the most part, has uh, been what has happened. Uh, could common ground be agreed between all parties to rebuild the shop back from the road to incorporate a wee memorial, waterfall, coffee dock, remembrance garden site? Uh, just my opinion. I'm not sure of how much property is available to the rear um, and how sort of a, a very busy business operating behind uh, such uh, a memorial might appear or maybe that might even be deemed as more disrespectful. I don't know. <clears throat> but keep your views coming, of course. Um, Greg, a lot of young people are going to Dubai to work as an employee because it's great money and is tax-free. Good health care, zero crime rates, no open borders like Ireland. Well, that's big. Well, well Okay. Like no open borders like Ireland. I, I just one thing I'll say about there's a little bit of an irony there, if you don't mind. There's a, probably an awful lot of people in the UAE that don't like to see so many Westerners coming in and adjusting their culture and uh, adjusting their standards. You get little bars and pubs opened. There's zero tolerance to drink over there. Uh, they've had to change their approach to women wearing, um, you know, their legs bare or their shoulders bare. I can assure you there's many people within the UAE would prefer not to see uh, the Westerners and their Western ways 
in Dubai. So to talk of the fact it doesn't have open borders when we're talking about loads of Westerners going there is a wee bit ironic. But anyway, I'll read it from the beginning. Uh, Greg, a lot of young people are going to the UAE to work as an employee or an employee uh, as an employee because it's great money, tax free, good health care, zero crime rates. Many of the large houses you see being built around Donegal are owned by these people uh, who have been working in the UAE tax free. On a macroeconomic level, is it better to have our people moving abroad to work or is it better to have them stay and work in Ireland under an extortionate taxation system where if they do well, they can pay up to 48% tax on the money they earn? Where is all this money being allocated? Certainly not to the healthcare system. And your callers uh, earlier in the week are complaining about uh, and not to the infrastructure of Donegal uh, either. Caller says her lane in Drumkeen has not been uh, fixed in 25 years. They've been to Lifford to try and get it done, but to no avail. Two farmhouses and three other private houses on the lane, and they still haven't done anything about it. This is in relation to the LIS scheme. The more I hear about the LIS scheme, the... Uh the more ineffective it seems. Have you entered our 10,000 euro home makeover draw? If the answer is yes, you are now automatically entered into our extra cash giveaway. If the answer is no, then now is the time to enter. Grey Cues will be ringing one lucky person on Friday the 5th of April, giving you the chance to win 2,500 euro in cash. That's not all. You will still have a chance of winning in our main draw of a 10,000 euro home makeover in association with Foyan Company, plus 5,000 euro in cash. Get your ticket now at highlandradio.com. If you've lost someone close and it would help to talk, why not call the Bereavement Support Line on 1-800-807077, Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're here to listen. Managed by Irish Hospice Foundation and supported by the HSE. Lorraine, what's the story with all the Pat the Baker sourdough packs framed on your wall? What? They're my diplomas. Diplomas? I've taken a lot of tests, you know, for deliciousness, for freshness, for flavour, for taste. Sorry, tests. You need to butter up your act and take the crusty craving taste test with the new Pat the Baker sourdough bread. Go on, be a taste champion. Pat the Baker, so fresh it's famous. Pat the Baker, fresh it's famous. The CFC Interior Stock Disposal Sale is now on. Due to renovations, an incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discount on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Derry, Cookstown and Abbey Centre. Sale now on. At Hickey Clark & Langan Insurance Brokers, they compare quotes from all the leading insurers so you get a great price. Home, motor and van farm, holiday home, travel and liability insurance, they quote them all. So if the worst happens, you're covered. For a competitive insurance quote today, call Hickey Clark and Langan on 912-6688 or pop into their office at Ballymacool Letterkenny. Hickey Clark and Langan General Insurance is limited. Trading as Hickey Clark and Langan is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. OK, it's 11 o'clock. Let's get a news update. And it's over to Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. The mother of one of the victims of the Creeslaw explosion says the thought of rebuilding on the site of the tragedy is horrifying. Donna Harper, the mother of 14-year-old Leona, was informed of the plans last week. Since then, a petition has been set up by Gemma Heaney to halt the reconstruction of a shop on the site where 10 people lost their lives on October the 7th, 2022, and instead establish a memorial. The funeral mass of Donegal woman Una Bowden and her two daughters will take place today. The 47-year-old, along with 14-year-old Kira and 10-year-old Saoirse, died in a road crash on the N17 in Mayo last Tuesday. The funeral procession is leaving Una's father John Carnan's home around now for funeral mass at 12 noon at St Junan's Church, Rafo. Speculation is turning to Simon Coveney's political future after he announced he will step away from Cabinet when the doll resumes next week. The Enterprise Minister told the next Fine Gael leader, Simon Harris, he would not be available to serve in the government after 13 years at Cabinet. He has yet to confirm if he plans to run as a candidate in the next general election and it's thought he may be considering running for a European Parliament seat again. 
Four people have escaped serious injury following an arson attack on a house in Oma in the early hours of this morning. The blaze broke out at a property in the Winters Grove area shortly before 3.45am. Police believe the fire was started by flammable liquid being poured through the letterbox of the house. The Mayor of Donegal Town has announced that he will contest the upcoming local elections. Porrick Kennedy will run as an independent candidate. He has held the role of Mayor of Donegal Town since 2018 and says he hopes he can provide a much-needed voice for the people of Donegal. There's a €600 Euro price gap between the most expensive and cheapest crashes in Donegal. A survey of 220 crashes across the country carried out by the Irish Independent revealed that crashes in South Dublin are the most expensive in Ireland, per child per month compared to the least expensive crashes in Monaghan. In Donegal, quotes for full day care in crashes range from 600 to 1,200 euro. Metairn is warning some parts of the country could experience up to four times the normal amount of rain over the next week. The wettest conditions are expected in the west and northwest. Farmers have said they want supports from the government due to the amount of rain over the last few months, preventing them from planting crops. And Taiwan's biggest earthquake in a quarter of a century was recorded in Donegal. At least seven people have been killed and more than 700 injured by the 7.4 magnitude earthquake. The tremor was recorded on a seismograph at St. Columbus College in Stranorlar. Those are the latest headlines. We'll be back with an update again at 12 noon. Thank you very much, Michaela. Pon Vrutinach an Togalach, agus deitak si vet from Hushach. Beggar Timpel Dinner Wine as Gach Kuiger a Ion and Vrutinach Dolchwig Hospital. Is ein vaccine new on Hussant is far. Machail du fein no the Foshta macher in vaccine MMR, to clar kuitiv serenashka, o harshkent egen HSC in Nish. The Foshti agus the Rina Fosse in Holaha. Gon oil a mach conas a vaccine oil, agus gon quinna a yenev, to our quarter HSC punkai, slash measles. On HSE. The county's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. Okay, we were talking about the Clonmany Road. A caller says, I agree with Colette. It's dangerous and treacherous. Get the council to do something. Julie on Facebook, totally agree with uh, Colette. Uh, from Clanmany, that road is very dangerous. Another totally agree, everyone promoting the Wild Atlantic Way, and I'm thinking, stop, no more tourists, please. Pat Gallagher, wall around Old Donegal, sounds very good sometimes. <laughs> okay. Have to agree, I'm a cyclist, and that road is a disaster. That comes in from Ray. Ray, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, Greg, could you please find out what is happening? The tank road in Ramelton, they're widening footpaths at the chapel and as for the road at the school, it's a disaster. You can barely get one car through. There's going to be a collision on the tank road as cars keep going up as the road is closed. Don't know what the story is uh, there. Anyone further information or further commentary, please let us know. Hi, Greg. Some dog owners feel entitled to let their dogs run free. They equate their dogs with humans. At Ludden Beach, there is a sign asking people to keep their dogs under control. Most days, you play dodge the dog and dodge the dog poo. These owners give good dog owners a bad rep. That comes in from Kate. Thank you very much for that, uh, Kate. Right, OK, let's uh, say good morning now to Professor Anne-Marie O'Dwyer, author of a new book. It's called The Cancer Guide. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor. How are you keeping? Hi, Greg. Can you hear me okay? Loud I have the usual clear. Zoom panic here. Uh, that was uh, on our side, which we resolved. Thanks very oh, much, no, though. No, I, I wasn't system. looking to push and blame. I'm just checking you can actually hear me now. Loud and clear. Now, but, just for those who don't uh, don't know, Professor O'Dwyer is a clinical professor at Trinity College Dublin and a psychiatrist with almost four decades of clinical experience and has worked at the Maudsley and Addenbrooke's hospitals and long-term at Trinity College and St. James Hospital in Dublin. So what... Um, gap in the market sounds sort of so crude and blunt but what 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 why did you think it was important to put this book together in the way in which you did okay so that's a that's a good broad question um and the answer is as you said greg i've spent many years working uh, in st james's hospital in trinity with people who've got cancer and my interest is in the psychological impact of cancer and its treatment and most importantly and how people reclaim their lives afterwards and even though in 2024, as you know, the, the rates for cancer are, have improved so much, uh, it's been detected earlier, treatments are better, people are surviving for longer, it still has a huge, 
human impact on people. Um, people describe it as it, when they hear the words that they've got cancer, that it's like being hit by a bus. Uh, they watch their lives head up into the air and they're waiting to see where the pieces would fall. And so there's still that huge fear and so many other emotions about cancer. And in looking after patients, they would say to me, if only I had known, if only I had known that this is normal to feel terrible or afraid or distressed or angry or, or all those emotions. And most importantly, when I would most commonly see people would be when their treatment ends. So they would have all these understandable hopes and expectations of how it would be when their treatment ends. They'd be so delighted. They'd ring the date in the calendar. They'd plan parties, dinners, and then they'd get to the end of treatment and they would feel just terrible. Yeah, but you, would have, you would have seen so many different scenarios and circumstances. Yes. And whilst all are different fundamentally, there's an awful lot of crossover of things you see. Uh, and I think you go through those in, in the book uh, and it's in, in very simple terms, uh, but detailed terms, if that makes sense. I'm on about simple to the reader. Uh, so just one part here, and I want you then to explain why you went down this route. So initial uh, reaction to a diagnosis of cancer, you talk of fear and distress, a brief outline of that, what people fear, uh, what impact the uh, fear has on them, what are the effects of the impact, and then what to do about it. So that's pretty much covered in, uh, you know, two and a half pages or two pages, really. Is that what you wanted to achieve, that you that people can relate to what you're talking about, but then also very quickly uh, sort of maybe get them to deal with it and understand it? So I suppose the book is written in a way that people can dip in and out of the book mm. as, they, as they choose themselves. And as you said, there's lots of different people and different ways that people respond and different types of cancer. So what I did was I used stories of real people, although anonymized, to give their voices and how they managed. Um, I think people vary hugely in how they manage cancer and how they will manage its impact. So it can be a quite a slow process. And in fact, there's a repetition in the book because of course, initially when they hear the words, you've got cancer, they have all these emotional responses. And then when they start on their treatment, they have other responses as well. So you will see that throughout the book, there's information given at different times. And a lot of times there's overlap, as you said earlier yourself. Um, I think information is power. So if people understand what's happening and have some information about what to expect, it can help them to prepare and not have that huge gap between how they thought they would be and how they actually are, because that's often the most cruel for people. However Two people steps. sort of deal with it outwardly, you, you seem to want people to face the cancer. Well, no, what I would like is for people to understand what may happen to them, understand the whole range of emotions that can affect them, and then they can choose themselves how they manage it. So you'll see that I say that some people are not naturally very extrovert. They're not people that have lots of friends and like to chat. And those people may well want to manage their cancer in a very private way, but they can privately be terrified. And so the idea is to give people the tools to manage in their own way how they want to, to, to manage their cancer. But it is about helping to unhook people from the fear or the shame or the anger or the guilt or whatever those emotions are. And for them also to realize that physically it is grueling as well. So many people are physically exhausted as well as psychologically exhausted at the end of their treatment. Uh, what are myths... Uh myths and misinformation that you're hoping to combat in this book what what give us some examples of what we're talking about That's there a, a great question greg there are so many um but i suppose my number one myth that my heart always sinks when people come into me and say oh apparently with cancer you're supposed to because mm -hmm. invariably it's unattainable what they've read um but the the biggest myth that really bothers me is the concept that you've got to be positive all the time mm -hmm. in order to beat cancer. So those are the two things, I suppose, the second bit about beating or battling. Most people are struggling to get out of bed in the morning on their chemotherapy or tie their shoelaces. So this concept that it's a battle, it's not very helpful. Most people are struggling to just get into the hospital, get their treatment and get home again. And the related myth that you have to be positive all the time, it's just not possible mm -hmm. in life even without cancer. So if that is the language that we use and what the perception is. is, does that make then people make a difficult situation even worse that they're not meeting societal expectations or they're not brave or they're weak or like, yeah, in other words, can I, it compound? 
All of those things, yeah. Greg, I, that just actually distresses me because it's so difficult for people with cancer. And in fact, I've had amazing texts from people in response to the book saying, look, thank you so much for saying this. It's difficult to manage every day. If there are people that it helps them to think that they're in battle, or so, fine. That's, mm. But for most people, that is just not the scenario. They are just trying to survive and get through their treatment and get to the end of their treatment and live for their families and themselves. It's interesting because I, I think, and it's related but unrelated, I'm not going to get into it now, but I've expressed in this programme before a little bit of the way we talk about mental health and the journey of mental health for me is a little bit the same. Uh, but as I say, we'll not dig into it now. So that what you're saying resonates with me, but it's often, yeah. you know, oh, this is what I have. Oh, the journey's really tough and yay, everything's great now. Like, you, you know, it's not like that for a lot of people. And then people, I think it makes it difficult as they try and meet these expectations. Well, it's interesting, Greg, but I'm sure you'll have seen there's a bit in the book where I talk about the double, st what is often very stigmatizing, where people also hugely struggle with the concept that they might have psychological struggles while they've got cancer. So yes, in a way it is relevant. And I told the story of one person who felt so stigmatized because they had feared all their life they would get cancer. And they'd also feared all their life that they would have mental health issues. And now they were seeing a psychiatrist. And for that, for them, that was just so difficult. So absolutely. And, and I suppose to some extent life goes on. You discuss many things, including, you know, um, managing intimacy, potentially yes. infertility, stuff yes. that not doesn't always come up in, 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 in conversations when you try and discuss these things, probably because they're so personal. Yes, and I think that's another very important point. Many of these things are very personal. And one of the things that people who have cancer say is that their privacy has been invaded. They feel so much on display. If they've lost their hair, everybody assumes that they're on chemotherapy and people will stop, I'm sure meaning well, but say to them, oh, you poor thing, do you have cancer? And they're, you know, I'm very, they're, they're often very private. They don't want to discuss it. And exactly as you say, picking up life, reclaiming life after cancer is a huge challenge that, again, often people aren't mm. informed about. And so they imagine they'll get to the end of the treatment and life will be as it was in the past. Yeah. And it never is. No, and Not also to... None of our lives are. For sure. It's so, And another thing we talk about a bit on this show as well, quite a bit on this programme too, is the fear of cancer returning or secondary cancer or... Yes. That, you know, I think, uh, and it's often women, they come back and, you know, we use the words, got the old clear, and everyone around them has got, right, yes, that's it, line drawn, let's carry on. But for the person that's gone through that treatment very quickly, sort of the doubts can reemerge, or the stuff that needs to be handled there so that they can, can get on with their lives uh, as, as best they can. That's exactly right, Greg, and that's why the, the later bits in the book are all about that, how to reclaim your life after cancer. It's very difficult. I mean, getting through treatment is phase one, <laughs> then there's rehabilitation, and then there's stepping out to reclaim your life. Now, the only thing I would say is many people have said to me, you know, my life was in bits, etc., but they choose to pick it up in different ways. They say, they, re they reassess their lives and say, I'm not doing that job that I didn't like, or I'm not commuting for five hours a day, or I'm not meeting all those people that actually made me feel worse after meeting them. So there's quite a bit of work about that and help about that, how to manage social interactions. And I think, I, I think too also that people around those with cancer probably could do with reading a book like this as well, because that person that decides that they're not going to do this, not going to do that anymore, those around them might go, she, he's, she's gone off the rails. What's going on? But really they're just making their own choices for them you know and that's what we talk about things changing you know and but people around someone with cancer have to recognize that as well yes because exactly as you've said greg cancer never just affects one person the person with cancer is in the middle but around them are all the people that care about them hugely who are also very distressed and then people in the wider field their friends their work colleagues their people in their local clubs all wondering how to manage and what to say. And I do give examples of the sort of things that people can say meaning well, but can often not have perhaps the, the effect they intended. So there's there's lots to to read about and to know about. How do you strike My the experience of listening to people with cancer? Which is quite an extensive experience. How do you strike the balance at whatever point this might become a factor after diagnosis or whatever of looking after yourself uh, and dealing with the emotions yourself and counselling everyone around you I'll be okay things are going to be fine I'll get through this how does do, do, does someone strike that balance themselves individually how what works best for them or is there advice in that regard 
Do you mean do you mean friends and relatives? But no, I, I just, just it, it, I have to speak to people, right? And they get this news, okay, and it's it's devastating to them. Yes. But then they find themselves having to go into the position of a counsellor to sort of make everyone around them feel that everything's oh, going yes. to be oh, no. okay. Well, I- yeah, no. Well, I, I don't think they should be doing that. I mean, I, I feel very strongly that people with cancer have enough to be getting on with to manage themselves and not have to be managing everybody else around them. You know, this is their their difficult moments, and, and I think they have to be allowed to manage it as they would like themselves. I do suggest that what can be very helpful for someone with cancer, I have found, is if they elect one key person that mm. they really trust who can manage things for them. And they say to that person things like, Please tell people this is what I will need help with, you know, the washing, the shopping, the cooking, whatever. Can you organize all that? And please also tell them that I just don't want to talk about things at the moment. So when they call to the door, they can leave the shopping or whatever, but I will be very grateful, but not able to talk to them. So I think electing a key person that you trust to manage that for you is, is important. They're like the firewall almost, is it? Well, a support wall, let's yeah, call it like that. A support, a support, a support yeah. wall. Can you talk but to me a little, a little bit about the section, the cost of honesty? Uh, yes. Where you talk about, uh, you know, that doctors must be honest, but then sort of go on in beyond that. Oh, yes. Well, I suppose uh, what I was talking about there is a, a very long time ago when I first started, which was a very long time ago. Um, and I started in med- medicine, hospital medicine first. Um, and you know, back then, the approach was very paternalistic. I, I remember being on ward rounds where somebody would be told, you have a bit of a shadow, we'll take it out. Um, and obviously, that was very problematic for people who didn't have information about what was happening to them. Now we've swung to the other extreme where, you know, I have come across patients having been left with 10 uh, academic papers from The Lancet on whether or not they should have adjuvant chemotherapy and the risks wow. and benefits. That, that, is, that is too far, you know, that is too far. So I think there is a balance. And again, I think we should be guided by the patient. I think patients should be, you, know, you say to a patient, what would you like, to, what do you know? What more information would you like to hear? And, and ask and answer their questions. Because really, somebody with cancer is in a very vulnerable position. They're frightened. um, They're afraid for their life. They're often in an area they have no expertise in. And they are waiting and dependent on the person who's seen them to share their expertise. But that needs to be done in a meaningful way. That's my opinion. Okay. The book is uh, The Cancer Guide, How to Nurture Wellbeing Through and Beyond a Cancer Diagnosis. It's very accessible. As you say, it's not a, for some it may well be, it's not necessarily a front cover to back cover read. Uh, You dip in and out of it. But I think sometimes too that these types of books are interesting for anyone to read because I I think it's good knowledge to have. And it might apply to cancer. It might apply to other things. A lot. There's a lot of crossovers. In, in you know, I don't think sometimes we always have to get these books just because it, it is there's a cancer diagnosis in the family or that for yourself. I think that you, you know you can grow reading, uh, and because you're understanding people and how they work and how they feel. Uh, right. Okay. And it's available as usual. I'm sure from all good bookshops and a couple of dodgy ones maybe as well no comments but thank you very no, it's, much it, well, it's, it's broadly available it's just this this phrase it is all, you know, it is it is very all, broadly available. all bookshops Absolutely. are good really is the point that i'm making all good bookshops exactly, exactly. all right yeah. professor Anne marie o'dwyer author of the cancer guide thanks for your time this morning i greatly appreciate it okay have a lovely day take care of yourself back after these Sleep under the stars at one of Ireland's top glamping destinations, Love Mardell Lodge in South Donegal, offering Lakeside Eco Lodge with luxury yurts and shepherd's huts. Perfect for a family getaway or a romantic escape. Get 10% off with discount code MARDEL for bookings made by end of April. To book, call 086 02 360 or visit lochmardellglamping.ie. Are your small appliances due an upgrade? Irwin Expert Electrical, your ultimate destination for all things electrical. From stylish toasters and kettles to innovative coffee machines and air fryers. Or elevate your tech game with our selection of smartwatches, iPads, laptops and phones and TVs from all your top brands. Stay connected with Irwin Expert Electrical, Larry Kenny and Bunkrana. Testing, testing. Do you need to get your hearing tested? Test your hearing with a free sample hearing aid from Hidden Hearing. Order your free sample hearing aid today. Call 1-800-370-0000 or visit hiddenhearing.ie.
Introducing Kia's brand new offer, 0% finance on new and used electric cars, including a free home charger for any EV purchased. To experience what it's like to drive an electric car, we will give you an electric car for 72 hours plus our ESB card so you can charge for free. Check out this offer at imotors.ie. Refresh your shoe wardrobe with the latest arrivals from Green Shoes, bringing you the latest styles from top brands such as Riker, Birkenstock and Wonders. Also, New Balance, Bugatti, XTI and many more. Step into style this season with Green Shoes, Market Square, Letterkenny Shopping Centre and Volcara or at greenshoes.com. One for all and shop LK cards accepted. Don't miss the BAFTA award-winning comedian Michael McIntyre's brand new show, Magnificent, at the SSE Arena Belfast on Friday the 31st of May 2024. As always, Highland Radio make it easy for you as we look after all your needs. We will provide luxury transfers, overnight stay at the Clayton Hotel Belfast on a and b basis, your ticket to the show, shopping time in Belfast City Centre. For more information, go to the outlet at highlandradio.com or give us a call on 074 91 25000. Michael McIntyre in Belfast. Okay, it was flagged earlier in the year, but uh, this morning Ryanair um, officially launched its uh, round twice weekly service from uh, City of Derry Airport to Birmingham. Jade Kerwin is head of communications with Ryanair. Hi, Jade. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for having me on. Good to have you on board. Right, now, uh, how does a connection like this come about? What is the process, uh, Jade? Do the, do, do, do the airport suggest it to you? Do you look at the numbers and, and go to the airport? How does it work? Trans, it's kind of a complicated way, but I suppose that um, I don't want to get kind of into too much detail on it, uh, just given the intricacies. But basically, it kind of looks, we look at different things like demand, we look at viability of the route, and equally where our aircraft are based then as well, and um, to ensure that we can deliver so a, a, a prompt kind of regular on-time service that ties in with the rest of our network. Um, but as you mentioned, Joe, we, we are launching Birmingham here from City of Derry Airport. Um, so our first flight is departing later on today, so we're all very, very excited. You can probably hear a bit of excitement in the background. Um, and I suppose our decision on that route was the fact that we do think it's going to be very, very popular. So it's adding on to our UK connectivity uh, from the airport here and um, building on our weekly, um, our four weekly services to Manchester that we currently operate at the moment. Um, so from today, we're going to be operating two uh, weekly return services to Birmingham. Um, again, as I say, building on our UK connectivity. And so it's really just facilitating the case of those people who want to travel over, whether it's for business, whether it's for study, whether it's for just visiting family and friends, it's just to, to get away for a little bit um, of a break. Um, and again, it's just kind of operating on Wednesdays and Saturdays, um, so it's kind of few days to be able to travel over and back for a short break or a long stint, equally if you like as well. Yeah, because there are strong connections between uh, the northwest of Ireland and Ireland as a whole uh, to the Midlands for historical reasons. You know, people that emigrated to work and uh, and what have you. We often think of London or Glasgow, but Birmingham, a lot of Irish in Birmingham too. A hundred percent. And I suppose that's what's important as well, is keeping that connectivity, i say, whether it is for work, whether it's to friends or family, because there has been that sort of long-term, I suppose, um, connection. Um, with, with, with both um, with both countries, so I suppose it's important to have um, maintain that and kind of keep that going as well. Is there um, can can you guess or, or maybe you know uh, because obviously we we always think of going out, but there's also inbound traffic. You know, people from the Midlands deciding to say, "Look, I'd love to see the northwest of Ireland." What is the sort of balance uh, do, do we normally see between you know it's uh, going out from Derry and returning versus going out from Birmingham and returning to Birmingham or or some other regional uh, part of the UK? Yeah. A hundred percent. I think that's always kind of the sort of the story that gets a little bit lost. So I think a lot of people think about so sort of the people in the kind of surround of the airport and people heading off on their holidays. When you think of planes, you think so people um, travelling away to get a break. But then as they kind of miss the, the flip side, where it does have an economic value as well to living inbound tourism. Um, and I suppose where I don't have the direct list, so we are going to be carrying about a hundred thousand passengers this summer um, across the two routes. And again, that's up about 35% of what we would have done last summer. So it, again, it's really, really strong growth 
um, there as well. And like I was looking at our flights back from Manchester uh, towards next week, and they're both sold out. So even mm. the load factors in that then as well is showing that there is that strong kind of demand. Uh, people will remember flying to the sun uh, from uh, Derry on an Orion Air airplane. Um, it, 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 do you ever see some... I mean, these things, uh, you, you probably don't have any information to hand, but do you see that happening again into the future? I don't think we'll see anything in the, in the forthcoming season anyway. Um, definitely not in summer and probably not for the rest of this year. Um, I'd say that we, we kind of operate what... Um, I suppose feeds the demand for the rest of the quarters that we have at the moment. And we do find it say that the, the UK connections are working very, very well from here. Mm. Um, so we do offer a sunshine route from the, the, the like the Belfast, which I know is about an hour down the road. And we do not find as that well too, yeah. So happy to kind of... Mm. Yeah, exactly. And um, Jules, we do find that people are kind of happy to, to travel a little bit because typically if you're going to the sun, sunshine destination, you kind of are going for a bit of a holiday or a proper breakaway. So you probably will spend a little bit longer there. So you tend to be happier to kind of still put in the, the extra few miles to get there as well. All right, OK. Listen, Jade, thanks for your time. Um, I suppose any anything that sees that airport more busy is good, good for the region. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Take care. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Bye bye. Jade Kerwin, Head of Communications with uh, Ryanair, there. It used to be really handy if you were heading um, to, to Portugal or, or where have you. 0866 uh, 25,000 WhatsApps and texts to that number. Now, um, we had a question in from a listener. This might have been while I was off, or maybe it never aired. I don't know. But uh, we were contacted by a listener, and the contact read as follows. My husband recently received a bill from Letterkenny University Hospital and was wondering if this was normal procedure and the fact that this is five years since his road traffic collision. So he was in LUH five years ago following a crash and then got a bill from the hospital. So we contacted the HSE as we do on your behalf. Uh, and it reads as follows. All invoices in respect of the care of patients are issued on a timely basis as per the requirement of the HSC National Financial Regulations. Normally, in the case of RTCs, the individual who will advise the hospital of the name of their solicitor who's dealing with the case and it's practice that all further correspondence is sent directly to that solicitor. Patients are asked to keep in contact with the patient accounts department to provide an update on their claim. On occasions when no update is provided by either solicitor or the patient, then details of the outstanding debt is again notified to the patient. In all cases, the original correspondence would have been notified to the patient. If this patient wishes to make a direct contact with the patient's accounts office, we'll be happy to provide them with a full outline of the dates of when the original correspondence was issued uh, to them. Uh, hi, Greg. I know it's a difficult subject to bring up, but I don't think people should be allowed to place permanent headstones along the roadside where a loved one has died. It must be awkward for councils if road widening uh, was necessary in those places. It is a tough one to bring up. And, you know, you can ask 10 people and they'll have different views on that. Um, I understand why it's done and why it happens. I understand why then it could be complicated down the line and you do see them very sadly because of the amount of road traffic collisions that we've witnessed that you do see them really quite regularly but this caller believes that they uh, they should not be allowed to place permanent headstones along the roadside where a loved one has uh, died. Hi Greg, read your earlier conversation about a loose dog in Swan Park. We are weekly visitors to Glenvay Park. Uh, oh, I haven't gone to Glenvay in a while. I must do that soon actually. That'd be quite nice. Uh, sorry. Uh, we are weekly visitors to Glenvay Park and even with signs and Facebook posts, people still don't keep their dogs on leads. Some dog owners have no consideration for people who have a fear of dogs. On our weekly visit, it's about half and half dogs on leads versus dogs running free. Really is quite annoying, isn't it? Chris Ashmore is going to join us uh, with business news after these. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. If the medical experts get it wrong, everything changes. From misdiagnosis or delayed diagnosis to surgical injury or even poor treatment, all have physical, emotional and financial consequences. We're here to help. So if your treatment didn't go according to plan, speak to our experienced medical negligence team at McElhenney and Associates. Find us online or call 074 917 5989. McElhenney and Associates Solicitors Stranorla. In contentious business, a solicitor may not calculate fees or other charges as a percentage or proportion of any award or settlement. 
For a great breakfast, pull into Kelly's Diner in Letterkenny. Not just a great breakfast, but mouth-watering burgers, delicious chicken, succulent steaks, and so much more. For kids, it's not just about pancakes, but a full children's menu to choose from. First communion and confirmation celebrations also catered for. Great food and great service every time. A Kelly's Diner, Letterkenny. Winner of Best Family Dining at the Highland Radio Hospitality Awards. Sheena Noel Design, formerly the Fabric Centre, Letterkenny is now open in Boncrana with a beautiful new studio ready to welcome you. With a vast fabric and wallpaper library, we deliver beautiful curtains, Roman blinds and upholstery. Motorised blind specialists. We have the inspiration to finish your home. Contact us on 083 3781 871 or check out our social media and website sheenanoeldesign.com for more. Charlie McClafferty Funeral Directors, serving Letter Kenny and the surrounding areas for over 100 years. Charlie McClafferty Funeral Directors, let our family take care of your family and guide you through a difficult time. For new perspectives and a fresh vision, join me, Greg Hughes, on the 9 till noon show every Thursday at 10.15 for your voice, your community. Get all your training and match day essentials at Michael Murphy Sports. From GAA gloves to mouth guards and grip socks to boots. Also shorts, base layers and training equipment. Gear up for pre-season and match days with the new Donegal home jersey and the Donegal GAA Rockway range of sweaters, bottoms and half zips at michaelmurphysports.ie. Join me, Marty Freel, every Friday night from 8 for Rockin' Hits on Highland Radio in association with Arena 7 where you can enjoy dinner and drinks in Woodbury Grill Bar and Restaurant before bowling in Arena 7 State of the Art Lanes. See arena7.ie Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why. The Euro Millions jackpot is an estimated 60 million euro. Play responsibly in store, in app or at lottery.ie The National Lottery. It could be you. Celebrate exceptional businesses in Donegal. Nominate your favourite for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards in association with McElhenney's Department Store. Our Customer Service Awards celebrate the businesses that go above and beyond to provide excellent customer service. To nominate your favourite business, simply visit highlandradio.com, fill out the nomination form and tell us why you love this business. The winners will receive recognition at our special award ceremony on June the 9th. Plus, they'll have the satisfaction of knowing that they made a positive impact on their customers. Nominate now. Nominations close 23rd of April. Highland Radio weather updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local. Shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. OK, so what's in store for this afternoon? Scattered showers developing along with some sunny spells. Temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. It's time now for this. Business Matters in association with the ATU Donegal Faculty of Business. Now is the time to realise your potential by enrolling on the part-time degree in business. Only three years with just one evening per week on campus. Open up your future by contacting the faculty office on 9186206 or visit atu.com. Today. And in studio with me is presenter of Highland Radio's Business Matters podcast, Chris Ashmore. Hi, Chris. Good morning, Greg. How's life? Wonderful. How did Easter go? Easter was grand, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, we'll get on to some news, and uh, he's not interested in chit chat, so we'll get straight into it. Um, it's always good for business owners and those working for them to communicate as best they can with each other and their customers. And with that in mind, Chris? Yes, the Donegal ETB is running a business communications course. It's taking place next Wednesday uh, in the Mount Ergal Hotel in Letterkenny. The course will cover communication styles, the various ways we communicate, negotiations, bargaining tactics, personal styles, emotion, conflict resolution, so plenty there. It's a day-long course and it's fully subsidised by the Donegal ETB, so uh, that's been geared towards uh, business owners and employees seeking to enhance their communication skills. Yeah, I think sharing uh, sort of experience and networking as well, really vital. Uh, Those who know, know 
but those who don't uh, perhaps don't. Donegal Women in Business Network, really good at, at, at sort of, you know, connecting people and, uh, you know, either, be it in terms of advice or in business opportunities. Absolutely. They are hosting a, a free coffee morning on Friday the 26th of April. And in a sense, in essence, it's really a chance to network. Uh, you don't need to be a member or even in business to attend. Everybody welcome. And they're hosting this in three venues, the Central Hotel and Leisure Club in Donegal Town, La Papa Coffee House in Letterkenny and the Ferry Glen Coffee Shop in Derry Beg. So good geographical spread there. It's about bringing people together, having a chat in formal circumstances and you don't know what uh, leads you could pick up. Uh, you can register by uh, contacting the Donegal Women in Business Network. Right. The Food Academy. Academy. Talk to us about that. Yes, now this was set up uh, back in 2013 uh, through Super Value, Board BIA and local enterprise offices and it was to f- facilitate small businesses to get their produce into the Super Value supermarkets, so bigger exposure. There's now over 300 what they're, they're, they call them Food Academy small producers in Super Value and about half of them who are currently supplying super value, expect their sales to increase by 50% or more over the next 12 months. So by getting into a, a multiple, you could be a small producer of cakes cheese or whatever. Or, yeah, um, and obviously it, your market is going to grow uh, enormously. I went to cheese and you went to cake. <laughs> this is sort of what would be described as the artisan food industry. Now, I find that to be very quite lofty language and turns me off a little bit, but uh, I suppose we're talking niche stuff, you know, homemade To stuff. a degree, yeah. And, it, you know, it's been a, a real success story and um, basically uh, this is the time of year to apply the, the deadline. Why I'm bringing this up is the deadline is this Friday uh, April the 5th. So if you go through your local enterprise office, they'll give you the details uh, about the whole process. And, you know, if okay. you, if things go well, you, you could be selling your wares and in super value. That would be a big deal, put yeah. it in front of many, many eyes, which uh, all of that uh, in this area, not completely unrelated to this week's Business Matters podcast. Exactly. Uh, appropriately, uh, this is also the time of year to apply for the Bloss Meheron, the Irish Food Awards, now, many of you may be familiar with the little stickers on various products that will say Bloss Meher, and it's uh, an attractive little sticker that uh, shows that your company has won their school, silver and bronze. Uh, Fallon Moore is the event coordinator for the awards, and she's been telling me more about the, the whole application process. So at the moment, it's really the paperwork stage. It's getting the entry form in before the 16th of May. So onto irishfoodawards.com and then from there it's into the deliveries. So depending on what people make, they get given different dates and locations to deliver so if they're being tasted at their best. So all of those are listed on the website and we do the tasting right throughout the summer. We start in June and we run through until the end of July. And then our finalists are notified in mid-August and then we're building up into the event which will be taking place in Dingle at the beginning of October. The awards will be announced on the 4th of October. All right, big boost then for anyone successful, Chris. Absolutely. And the uh, interesting thing about these awards, you know, there's blind taste testing of them. Uh, they have a panel of judges. So if you come out on top, it's gone through a rigorous uh, process yeah. and it's now internationally recognised as a, as a standard. So um, the guy who actually founded it all, uh, when he started this, there was no uh, recognised standard within Ireland for food products, and it's a, a link through University College Cork. So there, there's quite a, a lot behind this. All right, and it's kind of a two-parter business matters this week. Yes, uh, also uh, looking this week at um, a survey on broadband usage by businesses. It confirmed that small businesses in particular continue to use uh, the outdated copper broadband. Now, we had that change over a few years ago from analog TV to digital um, and Serview and all that. So there's similarities here that uh, copper wire connections will become a thing of the past uh, as everything moves over to fibre. And so there could be implications if you don't adapt. And uh, Cyro's chief commercial officer, Ronan Whelan, uh, I was speaking to him and he's been explaining just uh, what's happening. The infrastructure has been supplied by 
uh, air for uh, a large number of, of years. Uh, but that process of moving uh, and, and turning off that um, that uh, copper network has be- has commenced, and, and those engagements and dialogues uh, are, are going forth with uh, the regulator of telecoms called Comreg. And that process has commenced. Uh, Comreg have detailed how they think it should happen. So again, uh, I think for for listeners, it's, it's it's not to be probably get into the detail of that, other than to know. In the, in the coming months and years, uh, uh, telecoms companies are looking at ways to switch off that copper infrastructure uh, so that the same way it happened with uh, with the TV network and, and, and the introduction of Serview and that kind of stuff, it's the exact same thing happening again. And I think it's really important for consumers in many different types of businesses. You know, slow card machines in retail can, can be quite frustrating. It doesn't bother me because I've got the time. I'll just stand and wait. Mm-hmm. But also access to proper broadband in a restaurant or a pub or something. Now, you, people might have the views about, I'll oh, put the phone away and chat and all that kind of stuff. But practically, in this day and age, we do need to be able to access, you know, decent broadband. And the fibre gives them that content ratio that allows an awful lot of people on. But management of routers, I'd almost get a van, right, and go round and reset all businesses routers mm. 30 seconds switch off switch it on again it makes all the difference because they're on the side of the road greg Chris. the router man i know because they're on the side of the road okay and it's not just those in the building who have the password yes. they the, every car or someone walks past the phone pings on the on the internet these routers that most of them use are domestic routers they've got very very little memory and in no time at all they become just clogged up and of no use to those inside the building and certainly no use to uh, those outside but from outside you have to come in to use it just a bit of router management chris it's so critical yes it's not like impressed, death, but impressed. it's critical <laughs> you know especially if you're on the side of a busy road uh, mm. but anyway uh, fiber would help with all that but there's no point having all of that brilliant fiber going into a crappy router Indeed. All right. Okay. So, what else? There's other stuff on the show as just, well. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, uh, again, it seems to be deadline time for a lot of things. So, just uh, mentioning the uh, business support clinics, which are run by the local enterprise office here in Donegal. They give people an insight into the range of services and supports that are available. Uh, there's an online Zoom c- uh, clinic taking place on uh, Friday next. There's also an in person clinic at the ATU. Uh, the Donegal Killy Beggs campus, in fact, that's on April the 26th, and Philip O'Kennedy, business advisor with uh, the local enterprise office here in Donegal, has uh, been giving more details on that. So that's all in this Sunday's programme. All right, Chris, thank you very much indeed. It's available right now on our website as well. Uh, And just whilst we are talking business, uh, we launched yesterday the Highland Radio Customer Services Award, where uh, you, the consumer, have an opportunity to say a thank you. Uh, to your businesses. Uh, it is the uh, Highland Radio Customer Services Award 2024 in association with our friends at McElhenney's. They take place on the 9th of June in the Mount Ergel Hotel. You can nominate your favourite business today on our website. It's really, really simple. Uh, health and beauty, house and home, motor, lifestyle, retail, community and personal services and so on and so forth. Now you can go on just as a consumer and go, do you know what? I was in such and such a hair salon and uh, I thought uh, the service was really, really good. So you click into Health and Beauty, you put in the business name, where they are, the drop-down uh, menu to do the category, so that would be Hair Salon of the Year, and then you uh, just write a couple of, a wee message, if you wish, and send nomination. It is that simple on our website, highlandradio.com. And what I was really encouraged by yesterday was that on my Facebook feed particularly, so many brilliant businesses uh, reminding their customers to nominate them, which is brilliant. And we need to see more of that uh, as well. Fantastic. We had 16,000 votes last year. 16,000 votes last year. Let's get it to 20 this year. Uh, just give. It costs absolutely nothing, just a little bit of your time to give your uh, to give your um, local business a boost. Right. Uh, Ivan Yates, a former Fine Gael minister and uh, co-presenter of uh, what's proven to be a really popular podcast, the Path to Power podcast. Ivan Yates, good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. After years of engaging with you and you being quite negative and critical about Donegal, I feel I feel things are being rehabilitated now, <laughs> Ivan. I think things are things are feeling good now that you realise us in Donegal watch uh, listen to podcasts as well. Things are improving. What do you think? Bridges are being built. well. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 I'm. 
uh, always alert and alive to what's happening in Donegal of because course, yeah. uh, uh, it's a five seat constituency and uh, I think uh, the way Donegal goes, unlike in previous decades, uh, the rest of the country could follow. Yeah. But uh, uh, there's been a number of developments this week uh, and we have sort of entered a very well, can I ask kind you of a simple, febrile be, uh, time in politics. Yeah, yeah. I, can I ask you a simple question that keeps being asked of me and I don't have the answer? And it is this, what's going on in Fine Gael? Uh, that, you know, because people are going, what, Leo Varadkar, young fella, he's packed in politics, you know, uh, Simon Coveney, w- why is he pack- pulling out now? And then so many others not seeking re-election. So to, I'll put the question directly to you as that's been put to me. What's happening in Fine Gael? It is the end of uh, an era. Fine Gael have been in continuous power uh, since 2011. Uh, in fact, Leo is the longest serving uh, Fine Gael Taoiseach ever. And, and you know, they just have the miles on the clock. They had 76 TDs elected in 2011 after the Troika and Fianna Fáil's uh, sort of combustion. Uh, and a lot of those people, and this is a trend you're going to see in all parties, the idea of someone like Richard Bruton spending 42 years in the doll uh, is not going to happen again. Mm. People are going to do 20 years plus, and the churn of TDs is going to increase. That's the first thing. The second thing, there is an element of rats off a sinking ship insofar as, uh, you know, 2011, 76 seats. 2016, 50-odd seats. They went down 15 seats to 35 last time. I'm predicting on the podcast they'll get about 25 the next time. There are 43 constituencies. They face two, as do Fianna Fáil, two horrendous challenges. Those under 35, voting Sinn Féin, bitter about housing, the boomer generation, the increase in asset prices, house prices relative to incomes has put them beyond reach and affordability. But there's a second threat, which is those over 55 who would not be likely to vote left or vote Sinn Féin are now looking towards independence. And what's actually happened since I spoke to you last in January in the polls is that the surge to Sinn Féin, which came from Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, has dissipated from 35 to 25 percent for Sinn Féin, but that 10 percent has not gone back to Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and has gone to independence. And I'm now predicting that you could have a situation that Sinn Féin will still be the largest party, but that there could be over 40 independents, which will make government formation next time extremely difficult. And what uh, you're seeing now, and it's quite, you, you know, we're seeing it, it's not probably not the first time, but I, I don't recall it being as obvious as it is, is that parties sort of seeing which way the wind's blowing and struggling to, 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 to make sure they're, they have the best chance in the locals and the Europeans probably getting pressure from candidates, but also as we head towards a, a general election, everyone seems to be shifting position left, right and centre. Yeah. The reality is, if you look at it from Simon Harris's perspective, he has the Fine Gael Ardèche uh, this weekend. It was always the plan that he would take over from Leo. Leo brought forward rather abruptly his tenure. The idea would be that he would sort of go down with the sinking ship, a bit like the Costa Concordia. I don't know if you remember it when the yeah. ferry ran aground. The first person to get off was the captain. There was a touch of that uh, with the Leo thing. But the reality is, Therefore, Harris came in uh, six months or a year before it was anticipated he would. But the, 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 the job remains the same. Fine Gael need to go, no matter what their size after the next election, into opposition. And in the same way that Micheál Martin was elected Fianna Fáil leader in February uh, uh, 2011, they went on a month later to get their worst ever result, 19 TDs. Was Micheál Martin blamed? No. He inherited the circumstances... And I see it very analogous for Simon Harris that he's on the long track to rebuild the party. Well, one of the difficulties he has uh, is people can ask, what is the difference between Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a cigarette paper between them, a uh, difference in policy. And, you know, to, to an electorate that's only mildly interested in politics, they understand the sort of emphasis on the market economy and all of that. But really, they're competing with each other for the same vote. What kind of independents are likely to be successful? Because we're going to see now another round of 
you know, top secret bartering where uh, Fine Gael or Fianna Fáil Light Independent will try and secure something for their area. I think the public are tuned into this, probably a bit switched off by it, uh, so to speak. And I don't think it does independence any favours, any of that. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's just uh, how I feel. So what kind of independence do you think will do well uh, in the general election? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, I, I, in a professional capacity, emceed a gig in an escorty for Verona Murphy, whereby she launched a slate of 10 independent councillors. And I did a kind of rosary mm. interview with them, and I was shocked 700 people were there. More people were there that night, two weeks ago, than were at the Labour National Conference in the Helix. Wow. So watch out. There is a zeitgeist. So when I listened to carefully... What is the, the thing? Michael McDowell was there and so on. So, first of all, there's a feeling that the parties put the party before the country, that the top people put their career before their community. And the kind of policy issues that they're kind of sort of loosely uniting against are uh, against uh, the imposition of migrants uh, in a disproportionate way, against some of the sustainability and Green Party agenda. And and what I see is because the Greg the, the system of funding political parties doesn't work. A new, a new party you can you can't raise money privately through voluntary contributions and you can only get money after the election. Whereas independents actually get this allowance of thirty grand and that allowance and so on and they are actually well funded. So what I see is a possibility after the election that you would have a charter put together of some key principles and so on, and that a group of maybe a dozen might come together except a whip. Uh, this happened before with Shane Ross. Have cabinet representation, junior ministers, have Senate nominations, and a deal could be done. Now, put it like this, it is a very fragmented situation. It's very fluid, mm. but that's the sort of picture I see emerging post-election. There are those who uh, ha harbour the views that you have, anti-immigration and what have you, and they would be seen as a, a, a extreme. I don't like far left, far right, but anyway, they'd be seen as quite extreme in their views. And in the past, in local elections, general elections, they've got a couple of hundred votes and have been laughed out of the room. Do you think we might see, uh, and there are uh, a number of them that have, have built their profile uh, now, however big, it's hard to judge. Uh, do you see some of those types of candidates being more successful uh, in this, say, for instance, the local elections, the most uh, uh, the, the, the elections coming uh, most uh, soon? I, I, I actually, I actually, uh, I, I, I get the, the point that kind of, visceral anti-refugee stuff. You see a lot of it on Twitter and so on. Uh, I, I think they're limited in the market, but I think some will be elected. I think there's a feeling that there's a kind of Dublin consensus, uh, politically correct, the media are in on it, and people feel talked down to and excluded. I think they will tap into that, uh, but basically I think whoever is, the highest profile on Highland Radio about Micah, about whatever the mm. issue is the day, Letterkenny Hospital, those are the people. And it doesn't really matter what label they're on. It'll be more a vote for the individual who seem to be working on the ground, who seem to be connecting with the local people. And you know what? They could be a bit of a ragbag. There'll be no common denominator between a lot of them. Yeah, I get you. Uh, just in your experience... Politicians that, that there's one or two politicians that refuse to engage on this program because of some of the questioning on the issue of the likes of the defective concrete. Does that work in their favour or against them? Uh, I, I, I do media training and I advise people always to embrace the problem. I never believed in the thing when you're talking and explaining you're losing. I honestly believe how can you expect people to adopt your point of view unless. You are passionate about it, and even if people disagree with you, I'm, I'm a great believer that you should always, always. And also, uh, you know what, let's look at the figures. You know, in Donegal, in the morning time, you know, 40% plus of the audience is listening to it rather than national radio. And the truth is, if you're not where your audience is, where your voters are, you're missing out. Yeah, OK. Uh, Ivan, thank you. Uh, Path to Power, the podcast, available broadly, of course, on all the usual platforms. Yeah, Apple, Spotify, the whole lot. Uh, it's gone to number one uh, because of the heightened interest in politics. 
and the elections and so on. We've been shocked about that, and it's really going well. And you know, I I don't say six of one and half a dozen of the other. I give four times opinions. You don't have to agree with me, but I think it gives you insights that you won't get in the mainstream media. Well, you see, the, the, and this I, I will let you go after this one. You know, another high-profile political journalist leaving journalism to go into government. You talked earlier on about this perception of, you know, a cosy relationship between politics and, and journalism. And every time we see another high-profile move, that I think just really uh, drives home that that is the case. I'm not saying it is. And I think what's happened is, is with, with your project there, people are enjoying it, and, and I hope they enjoy this show too for the same reasons, is that they don't see that cosy relationship, that you, you call it as it is. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually in, like, Matt Cooper is a genuine journalist. He asks all the questions like you do. I mean, I have actually been in the sort of editorial opinion space. Uh, I did that on News Talk. I did it on The Tonight Show. And, like, all of that, like, I I was offered to do a podcast with Sean O'Rourke, and he said, look, in 40 years, I was forbidden to have any opinion. You know, I've always worked on the basis of trying to provoke thought, provoke uh, uh, leadership, thought leadership in terms of that. So therefore, my own particular speak is uh, punditry, is, look, I've been there, done that, and this is what I think is going to happen next, or they're saying this, and this is what they're meaning. But there is definitely a a kickback against uh, what I would call the RTE mainstream Irish Times kind of thing. And I'm not personalising of this. No, neither am I. You know, this is the way you speak. Yeah, this is the way you speak. This is the way you think. And if you think outside of that, you really should be cancelled. Uh, I don't. I don't agree with that. I think that you know you you've got to have a national conversation which is entertaining, which is provocative, uh, which 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 you know is sometimes contrarian because you know uniform consensus is actually, you know, a a death to democracy, in my opinion. Okay, Ivan, thanks for so much of your time. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. That is, uh, yeah, lovely to chat to you. Ivan Yates, former Fine Gael Minister and um, co-presenter of the Path to Power podcast. Uh, I th- uh, a caller says I had cancer 11 years ago I spent 7 weeks in St Luke's I had to pay for treatment in Letterkenny and St Luke's it was 850 euro a night I wasn't told that you only pay 70 euro a night this was in 2013 the other patients had to tell me all the travel for Donegal people isn't right either I was in Dublin during the week and back to Donegal at the weekend I could not get a medical card for love nor money I had no private health insurance uh, either uh, just a couple on our conversation we've been having as sensitively as, as one possibly can in relation to the future of the uh, Cretia Explosion site. I think the shopping facility should be allowed to be rebuilt and put a memorial alongside it. While everyone has sympathy for the families, the communities also need the facilities. No one wants to hurt or upset the families, but mediation needs to be carried out between the owners and the families on this issue. I agree. And Greg, as a resident, resident of Creesa, the community needs the shop and the petrol station, but no one wants to offend the families and... Uh, fully understand their grief okay listen thank you so much for all of you who listen to the show those of you who watch the show and those of you who text and called in really really appreciate it we really appreciate it we're back tomorrow morning